referring to here. Let's see my um, Do you know what I mean, Chuck, or am I gonna? Yeah, I no, you're pretty much on your own. I didn't look at it. Like I said, Jamie was going to do an update. I know that we okay. were asked to go to two meetings in January, but showed up they were supposed to go over some okay. aquifer stuff and the commission was uh, interested in that back then I sent emails but um, okay there is a deadline to submit comments uh, of February 9th and the, um, the only thing among the bylaws that looks even remotely close to a, a water management issue is the aquifer protest protection district section um, and it says in their little table that section 10 is the new bylaw section. So I went to the town website to see where, if that was available for review, and I couldn't find it on the website, so. BHB has a copy, it looks like. Is it on the website? It's on the BHB website. It's on the VHB website? Yeah. Could you mail me a link to that? I will. Okay. Is it, how did you know it was VHB? Is that on this? Because uh, I don't even see VHB me mentioned in this. Okay. Okay. If you could email that to me. Yep. I, I would like to look at Section 10. If you could actually email it out to other members who are going to be in attendance in the next couple of meetings. Mm -hmm. So everybody except Allison and Terry. Okay. Thanks. You might like to read it on his trip, if, you, if you'd like <laughs> to, if, if you want. Put me to sleep, right? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Um, okay. My watch says 7.05, so let's, uh, let's, um, let's discuss 84 Whittier Street. Um, is there a resident here to present? Hi. Welcome. Come you mind um, standing up and just kind of briefly going over the project? Welcome. We don't bite. Here, please? Yes, please. <laughs> okay, so. Just for the record, just introduce oh, yourself. Oh, sorry, I'm Jen. That's okay, thank you. Matt, sorry. Hi. Hi. Um, so we are a little cape. We're trying to fit our family in it. Um, given our proximity to conservation, have asked to go up, um, raise the roof. Um, in doing so, we will be adding a one foot cantilever in the front and the back. Um, yeah, on the, on the second floor only. Um, okay. So there will be absolutely no ground disturbance whatsoever. This is only a cantilever. Um, on the right side of the property, over the existing deck, we would like to enclose that as well with a mudroom. It was already built with sauna tubes, so again, there's no ground disturbance, no footings. No additional digging to support that structure no. needed. Okay. No. Okay. Um, okay, and we had a site visit. Um, Rebecca, you went out, mm -hmm. and um, did you see any want to just go over some of your basic Snow observations? On the ground, uh, Snow I did yeah. see uh, <laughs> concrete bounds where the uh, pre-existing uh, delineation was uh, placed. Um, it's right at the edge of a, a lawn. Um, everything looks straightforward to me. Okay. Were they, I'm just curious, were they raised? Were they? Yeah, they were about they were, they're just they're like a foot and a half off the ground. Oh, okay. I mean, they're like evident you can't miss them we can't move them we can't hide them right so right. gotcha <laughs> yeah. so I, I was walking way out and saw the sensitive firm that they were bad yeah I did ask where they would stage um, the construction equipment and she called her um, uh, Mrs. 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 called her uh, builder and that would be in the front yard okay. along Whittier Road yeah, adjacent to the wetland area. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I took a look at the plans. I didn't have any 
questions or comments? Um, are there any other questions or comments from commission members? So you're basically building over the same footprint, is that correct? Yeah. The deck and the backs to remain, yep. uh, with the exception of the uh, small mud room on the side. It, yeah, I mean, it's over the remains goes over it, yeah. Right. Okay, I'm fine with that. Uh, I have a question on the, the, the existing deck. Is that open so the water goes through it? Yeah. Okay, so then, then that's going to get closed off. Well, a seven, the deck is 41 by 14 and just the back a little. So that all stays open as it is. The only area that's getting covered is a 7 by 7 section on the right side. So that's highlighted on the plan that I gave you. It's this thing right here. But yeah. the rest of the deck remains yeah. open. All right. Okay. Um, you know, now that I look at it, um, there's only one thing I don't see, and maybe you could point out to me if you have it somewhere, and I just haven't found it yet. Do you have a place where you plan to put some sort of erosion control, just or a limit of work line between your back deck and the wetlands? So I've seen work be done by Thompson before, and I mean, I think we kind of assumed we would be required to put some sort of e-bills along that cement barrier line. I didn't yeah. okay. go any further than that in my thought process, so I don't know if that's okay. what you're thinking. Um, sometimes just for the sake of understanding, mm -hmm. um, it helps to to have, I mean, that sounds sufficient mm -hmm. um, to me, or even it, work work permitting, um, you know, 10 or 15 feet upland okay. um, of that, if it, you know, if, it, if it's reasonably doable, mm -hmm. um, so that so that the workers don't, um, you know, go all the way up to the wetland line. Huh. That was me. Um, <laughs> um, you know, if the, the more buffer we can get, the sort of a right. greater level of insurance, you know, right. you won't, there won't be problems. Um, okay. Okay. Will straw waddles be fine in this case since there's not going to be any earth disturbance associated with it? Um, I think. I mean, they act as a physical barrier, and it, it, you know, we're not we're not anticipating a huge amount of sediment coming down here. I'm just thinking in terms of um, ease of installation and, and expense for the pond. I think I think uh, you know silt silt uh, fence or straw wattles would work, and um, it should be fine. I mean, all those things can be changed when, when we get out there, but. You know, I'm not sure. I mean, it, it's a big construction project. Things can happen. Right. You know, access to the entire house, how, what's going to happen with that, how they're going to take the roof off. You know, there was some of those questions that need to be asked. But, um, yeah, straw bottles are barely fine. I mean, I'll give you that. I, 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 for, I just never like those. For a large excavation, they're not okay. Yeah. for that, but, but because this is mainly occurring, and granted, I know ground gets disturbed, um, it's, not a, it's not a huge expense. If I but. may, just to maybe ease your mind a little, like I said, the deck is 41 by 14, so where we're going up and over, you have 14 feet of my deck catching your debris, <laughs> so it's mm -hmm. not like it's yeah. falling down and yeah. running, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's landing yeah. on my deck, so that's Which should make it easier burden. to clean up. Right. Yeah. I understand. Um, you know, not. You know, since you aren't disturbing the earth, it's more. It's more just a. Uh, you know, a, a limit of work. Mm -hmm. You know, to prevent access. Mm -hmm. It sounds like. Do you have any con any idea of the timing of this, the schedule? As soon as possible. <laughs> okay. So you would you would Weather do the work. You would yeah. do the work in the winter. Yes. You, you're not going to wait till. Spring. I mean, if we're forecast to get a blizzard, absolutely not. Yeah. Um, right, yeah. If right. we get a good ten-day weather window, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, which actually is a little bit better than doing it in, in the spring because the earth would be soft and mm -hmm. easily damaged. Right. So. Um, Snow is better than rain. Mm -hmm. Yep, it is. Um, any other questions from commission members or Chuck at this point? <coughs> No, I just suggest when you guys get to the point where you're putting in the erosion control that you give us a call first. And if there's two feet of snow out there, it might not be needed at all. Okay. So well, in that case, let's go We only have three. Itself. 
Okay. So, um, okay. and then just that stockpile area, I just want to kind of have that staked out so everyone knows, including your builder, where that where that's going. Okay. Okay. Do you have any questions? Um, I guess, like, what is the process in here after we're done with the Okay, the process is once all the questions are asked and inf all the information is given, um, we put it to a vote um, mm -hmm. as to whether or not we're going to issue a positive or negative determination. Mm -hmm. You want us to vote negative so that you don't have to refile another permit with us. Because if we did a positive determination, you would have to refile all this work under a notice of intent type of permit, not a request for determination. Okay. Okay. So, so negative is good. Negative is okay. good. Um, okay. Negative is good. And some and, other um, and so we would vote. Um, and you would. Um, there's a waiting period because I think you had to notify a Butters on this. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there's sort of a what a 10 day window for a, for public to appeal mm -hmm. if anybody from the public does um, and. That said and done, and once you get the permit from us signed, um, you can go ahead with the work. So, okay. so, so. Then you vote when? Yeah. At this that, meeting. Oh, okay. At this meeting. And I'm you thinking sign tonight. It after those, those 10 days? Once the negative determination is drafted, because mm -hmm. it's a document that we have to draft up right. um, with your information and, and our comments, um, and you know, what we were saying about erosion control, maybe we'll put something in there that says, you know, erosion control could be a range of things depending on ground conditions. Okay. You know, that's mm -hmm. what it sounds like it'll be. Um, then you get the document so that you can okay. see all the things that we are asking for, um, mostly notification that you tell us when work is starting so that we can just come out and peek and see how it's going and, mm -hmm. and see how it's getting done. So. Um, and that's pretty much about it. I'm going to ask the public, is there any questions about this project at 84 Whittier? Okay. Okay. Hearing none. Any more questions? No. All right. Um, I'd like to entertain a motion to issue a negative determination with conditions as discussed tonight. So moved. Uh, second. Second. All those in favor? Okay. So the negative determination is issued. You, uh, I, I don't think we have a draft of the negative determination. Is that right? No, we don't. No, we don't. So, um, so we will have to sign it at the next meeting, which okay. is eleventh. The eleventh. The okay. So then your butters get ten days from now or from the eleventh. From the eleventh. From the eleventh. So that's so. February twenty one is your go from us. Okay. okay? Sounds good. Thank you very much. Thanks for your application. Thanks for coming in. All right. Okay. Let's let's take up the matter of 101 Willow Street. Now this isn't under a permit. Is that right, Chuck? It's no, it's not. an inquiry under an already issued order of conditions. Okay. Okay. Um, I just want to remind everyone um, to please sign in um, at the front door um, if you haven't already. I, I think they're calling in the Austin Preparatory School. Also. Good evening. Good evening. Just for the sake of the record, just introduce yourself, please, and, um, uh, and sorry, present yeah, what you want to present. Sorry, Hi. Good My name evening. Sean Boyd from Gale Associates. Hi, Sean. Uh, this is Jamie from Court Construction, um, Mr. Lowden from Lowden Associates, and Dr. Hickey from Austin Prep. Okay. Welcome. 
and we're here to, we submitted a uh, notice of intent a while ago, last uh, March, April, I believe, for the Austin Prep Track and Field Reconstruction Project. Um, and we come before you tonight to request a minor change to the plan with regards to the construction entrance. I brought a plan, I think, um, a copy of the handout. Yeah, we've got it. Yeah, the, this, these handouts have an additional plan on there called the traffic circulation. I think it's important to see. So an additional, so this is also. Awesome. No, that's no, 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 just, yeah. just, just, just okay. Something gotcha. that goes along with that, um, and that's the plan that's here on the on the board. And you can see here this, the entrance here's Willow Street, uh, down at the bottom of the plan. And what was proposed back during the original submission was for trucks to enter onto the, the campus, drive through the campus to just about the main door, take a right, and enter through the existing access drive down to the the, the track and field facility. And then leaving the site, they would have to follow back up the access road and to follow the traffic patterns on the site. You can see the yellow line, follow it around the back of the building, through the parking lot, and back down next to the tennis courts and out to Willow Street again. After the Austin Prep went through the contractor process and selected a contractor, they presented the idea of relocating the construction entrance to just as you enter the site off of Willow Street to create a gravel ramp with a stone stone entrance similar to what was proposed originally. So that way trucks could enter and exit the site without having to travel through the site um, and try to help with the site safety and, and trying to keep trucks out of the campus as much as possible. The second plan, or the, the original plan that was distributed to, to the commission shows how that, kind of a more detail how that would be constructed. They would use um, gravel on site to create that ramp roughly a two to three to one slope to match to existing grades. They would put additional, right now we have erosion control measures, silt, silt fence and materials <coughs> installed at the weather line. They would put additional silt fence at the bottom of that slope, that, that ramp slope. And then the surface of that ramp, before they exit onto the street, the access drive again would be a stone um, in order to help create or to take debris off of the tires as they exit the site uh, before getting onto the access drive on the little street. The reason we're before you tonight is this is within the 100 foot buffer. Uh, similar to the proposed entrance, the original entrance was within the 100 foot buffer. Um, this one is also within the 100 foot buffer. Um, so we wanted to, in discussions with Chuck, and I know Jamie from, from Cork, the contractor, has talked to Chuck and said it would be a good idea to come before you for questions and to get your approval. So from the school's point of view, it's a safety issue is, is the real reason why they'd like to have it as soon as possible upon entry versus going circulating through the site with their students and cars moving. That's, that's the real motivation behind it. Right. Instead of having a high flow rate of traffic along the entire the equipment yeah. driving all the way, trucks driving uh, all yeah, the way. Yeah, I, I can jump in. Our biggest concern is, I don't know if anyone's seen the school, but it's yeah. heavily parked. There's parking along the driveways all over the place. During parent drop-off and pickup time, it's it's just inundated with cars. You can see the kind of circuitous route for us. We'd actually have to be driving uh, trailers behind the school during the school day um, and out to the street. So our concern is to kind of uh, eliminate that by short-circuiting that and coming in just south of the existing parking lot. So we're almost as segregated as much as we can be from that day-to-day uh, -day use of the facility. Okay. Um, I think my first question is, um, why wasn't this first one outside of 100 feet? Mainly for purposes of constructing the wall that's proposed in this. In order to keep construction flowing in the schedule and process going forward, if they were to move this here, say, outside yeah. of the 100 foot buffer, yeah. they would have to do, they would not be able to keep with the schedule, construction schedule and tie in that wall. They would not be able to relocate utilities until that, until all of the earth removal is complete, which is going to take a long time in order for them to get all of the, the topsoil and gravel underneath it off the site. So, so this road would be there for the duration of the project? It, it would be there for the majority of it. There's going to be a point where we're going to pinch ourselves off, and then we'd have to then use that alternative, you know, the existing access. Um, yeah. But for the majority of the earthwork, there's a substantial amount of, like you said, topsoil that has to come off the site. Um, it's a net export site, so there's gener materials being generated that has to be disposed of. And then as we're bringing in uh, <coughs> the clean fill for the profile of the track and the field facility, so there's going to be truck traffic just, you know, for 
extended period of time that we're trying to limit going around the school. So. Yeah. But to his point, yeah, the, the location is predicated primarily on there's an existing row of trees there, um, but it is based on that wall and the utility construction. It's really the only place we can come in off that driveway. I thought I saw an email about a tree having to come down. We're not recommending removal of any additional trees for this. There's one memorial tree there, a very small young tree that we've been working with Dr. Hickey to find an alternative location where we would transplant that tree on site. Okay. It seemed like the tree that's inside the, um, the new construction access wasn't checked off on one of the plans, and that's why I mentioned that. Is that the tree you're talking about? Oh, the small one, yeah. It's a very small one. Uh, the one see. with the X on it was that, that overlay that I did on that figure three with the grading. Mm -hmm. It was a, um, just a scan of the approved plans, the site prep plans themselves. So um, there's already that tree that's there was already called the remote. Oh, yeah, I couldn't find that on the plans I had, so the one that's directly under the access, to check that. Um, I was wondering, when, the, at the final, uh, the final product of this area, what's, what's the intention out there, grass, or, yeah. or is that the replication area? No, that's, you can see, so this line here is the replication area, mm -hmm. so just to the, to the south of that would be grass, bloom and seeded. Um, brought back to basically what it is today. Right, it's, it's currently kind of a, a, a lawn that's constantly mowed for the school right now, so it's not yeah. you know taking down any natural vegetation or anything like that. Sure. Um, I was just asking that question because I just want to make sure that everyone's aware of the uh, you're going to be compacting the soil a lot by driving over it and installing this. And if you get into that replication area at all, you're going to you're going to have to do more <coughs> than just fluff up that soil to get it back to a usable condition for, it's probably okay for grass if you're outside of it, but for the replication area, we probably wouldn't work out. So it's, it's out of the replication area as well as the total the grading is out of the way. There's something specific, because we, we're gonna be looking to do that as early as we can. So mm -hmm. there's gonna be kind of that, that road will be you know, south of it, I'm sorry. Yeah. North, north, used to north be enough, but south of that area. Yeah, it's out, it's out except for that first grading line is, is pretty, pretty close. close. Yeah. So uh, let's just make sure that um, the erosion control is a good idea and then build on the other side of it. I, I know it's not part of our project and our purview here, but um, <coughs> safety concerns, when, um, how are you guys gonna put a schedule together to, I guess, not be using this access during uh, pick up and drop off and is there any kind of uh, flag people that's an, yeah, that's an internal requirement for us through the school. I mean, we're, we're permitted to work on a normal working hours. Um, mm -hmm. Our normal day is 7 to 3. Um, but because of that drop-off and pick-up time, we're actually limited to uh, basically 8 to 2. And that's the window that we're going to be using this. And that's, that's going to be a single in and out. We're going to be on-site monitoring. We're loading the trucks as they come, as we're hauling material out, and we're directing the trucks as they come. <coughs> so, so someone will be really taking care of that, that uh, right-hand turn. How many trucks do you anticipate um, a day? Well, that's a, it's a kind of a, I, I just to jump into, I did send an email to Jesse with the, the community development uh, division earlier asking, she had the same question. Mm -hmm. um, during, you know, right now obviously we're in the winter months, so we're, we're, we're doing what we can in weather permits. The site's gonna be shut down now for, for some time with all the snow, but um, we can average on a, on a very good day, about a thousand yards <coughs> going out the door. And that's under ideal conditions, weather, um, and just a straight hauling operation. So in terms of the quantity, we have about you know, roughly 10,000 yards of material to move between topsoil and subgrade soils to get off the site. That works out to about 400 trucks. Um, obviously, that's not going to occur within a one-week time frame. Um, so it's a difficult to answer because it's going to be um, when weather permits and when we, when we have a need to get rid of the material. We have limited on-site stockpiling areas uh, with the buffer zone. So we can only stockpile a certain amount uh, of material and get it off site. So uh, I don't see it going beyond anything more than you know that 1,000 yards a day as a, kind of a max worst case scenario for the amount of trucks going out of there. And that would be literally a truck coming in and going out probably every 15 or 20 minutes. But that is, I don't want to scare anyone and say that's going to happen for three months. That's just you know if, if we have an ideal situation where we can haul the topsoil, we'll get rid of it all at one time. <coughs> And uh, you're going to modify your um, O&M plan to pick up the cleaning in front of the access road out to um, Willow Street? 
We had that anyway. I mean, we, had we, that we, anyway. Had, we owned all the yellow um, in terms of construction and cleaning on the site, so we just, you know, we, we own that lower portion already. That have been there, uh, been there a few times, uh, and I noticed that by the end of the day, even with limited work you're doing now, there's there's a lot of material on the road that has to be picked up, and I would expect that same amount, which I didn't see on my on the entrance. I would expect that same amount of material to be, you know, from the new entrance to Little Street. Yeah, so. we've carried a street sweeper through all of that, um, mm -hmm. so you know we can make sure that if there is any track in the road, we'll take care of that. Well. And then those any more um, storm drains that you need to take care of that down in that Willow Street area. Nothing you know. beyond what we already own. I mean, we already own, you know, we are responsible, I should say, from Willow Street all the way into the site and around the building. So really, it's just that little, that little red line that we're picking up as additional. Okay. I think this is a much better plan. I think there's much less uh, opportunity for sediment to the, the system, catch basins, with the new plan as opposed to the old route. Um, we know what happens to, to silt sacks. Um, sometimes they let go. Sometimes they're not installed very carefully. Um, the less we can have the trucks traveling around in, the, in this area where it, it's tributary to the wetland, the better off they are. So I think this plan is, is definitely the way to go. Do any other I comments? have some questions. Go ahead. Um, I'm new to the commission, so I apologize. I haven't seen your plans previously, but where, where are you cleaning the trucks before they get onto Willow Street? There is a stone, the stone construction entrance would be the second plan. We're actually going to maintain both, just just so everyone's yeah. aware too. We've already installed the original <coughs> one. And the so, that, so that's where you're cleaning the, the tires? This, yes, this section through here, as you, so there's a slope down to the field as you get to the top of that slope where this new gravel entrance would be located is this section through here. It's kind of got a different hatch on the plan. Do you, are you putting in your replication area after you finish all the, the construction? Yeah, I believe that would be the intent. Okay, uh, so there wouldn't be any uh, runoff into that replication area? No. Okay. Right now, the way the replication area works is it has to, in order to get down to the elevation of the current wetlands, mm -hmm. topsoil and some material has to come out of that. So for during the, this part of where that gravel road will be constructed, that will stay, that the current elevation. Mm -hmm. And then once that's removed, I think is when the contractor will take the material out um, as they're removing this temporary. When, when, when does most of this construction occur? Yeah, with the schedule, we're, with the weather. We're trying our best to work through the winter as much as we can. Uh, our goal our, our goal for the school is to be done by the 4th of July weekend. Um, you know, mm -hmm. we're, that's assuming favorable weather through the you know, entirety of the winter, and we have two feet of snow outside, so. <laughs> um, what is the contractual date again? Is it? I think it was sometime in August. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're targeting being done early July, and, and you know, and that's our goal, and we're, we're continuing to push for that goal. Um, all right. Uh, um, I had one question. Um, so this this plan for this road was submitted by Quirk Construction, um, and I don't see an engineer stamp on it. Has an engineer looked at this plan? Yes, uh, we have. And who would that be? Yeah, that's so. I'm from Gale Associates, who presented the original submission to okay. the board. We've reviewed this from Quirk. Uh, that's why we're <coughs> attending tonight to. To, uh, in support of, of what work has presented um, and feel this is a, a good solution to help prevent trucks from traffic or traveling around the school. Okay. Um, some of the grading uh, really does, uh, and I understand it's a 1 to 30 plan, some of the grading goes right up to the limits of that um, wetland rep. Wetland. Does it go up to the, it does go up to the limits mm -hmm. of the wetland Pretty replication area. I'm trying to figure out which line is which. It's no. the, the 194 contour is the closest to the wetland replication area. Okay, okay. So it's, you, if you see the bold, the black bold line, that is, the 194 contour is just outside of that replication Okay. Area. If, if this road were even, you know, if it were started at the same place along the driveway and even angled to be more parallel um, with um, the 100 foot line. Yeah. So more, you know, more like this? Yeah. I mean, it would pull it, you know, I guess I'm wondering, can this road be reconfigured to just give a little bit of safety um, 
I mean, would the grading of that still come out to the wetland replication line? I mean, what? Uh, yeah, you know, we're, trying to, we're trying to balance. So that, that location yeah. was specific for the, the reasons we spoke to earlier, which was to kind of find a, a site line. And I think it was a product of a, an on-site meeting that Mike Alden, our, our superintendent, might have had with Chuck. But um, it's to kind of shoot the gap between the two major trees that are there and remove ah. the small one. And, and also right. not to have to remove the there's a tree just to um, just yeah. to the north you know the off to eleven o'clock say from that right. one tree that's yeah. being removed that we're trying to maintain by not right. getting into grading within that uh, base of that tree and so forth so I mean right. we can feel the just just but with respect to the wetland replication I think Sean touched on it is that you know this is a temporary road uh, we're only going to use it until we need until we're done uh, having a need for it and take it out and if it comes time with the wetland replication area that road will. You know, we'll, we'll move it if we have to, but if it's, uh, it'll more than likely be out of the way at that point. It'll be, you know, we'll pull it out of there and then focus on the replication area and clean the area up, loam and seed, and, and pull everything out of there. Right. Do you have a plan that shows your additional erosion control at the base of that slope? It's not on my plan. It, no, and I, I, it was something that we were talking about outside and saying that we'd be willing to throw in a row of, at cell fence just to protect any localized erosion on that slope alone. Yeah. We, we'll throw that in, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Sean, do you know how do you recall how much is coming out of that wetland location area? How many feet are being removed? It's, um, I believe it's around a three thousand square foot area, and I want to say it's on average about two feet of material. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about compaction with two feet. I don't think it's going to. Yeah, it, <coughs> we have to right now the existing. Can we go down that far? Um, okay. One ninety three. The wheel pressure is not good enough. It's right about one ninety. One ninety one is where the existing wetland grade elevation is, mm -hmm. and we're at the back of that wetland application is 194, so we're doing a three to one slope in that 3,000 square foot area mm -hmm. to, to match and try to get down to the wetland line. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be an issue then, the compaction. Even if, even if it does, not that it should, but even if it does extend over the wetland application area, compaction shouldn't be an issue. How, how just curious, how deep it do you have to be concerned about compaction? Well, it depends, but because <coughs> the soil we're, we're talking about a, a, we're talking about a, a, a fill structure, um, and then taking out the um, soil after the, the, yeah, after be, digging after excavating no, the road. No wheel loads going down that deep. You know, after two or three feet, depending on what the material is, it's just not really going to be an issue. Will this road be constructed from the material that's generated during construction? Yeah, our intent is to use on-site material. Is we actually ran a sieve on the material out of the slope, and it's uh, actually clean gravel. It looks like that was an old constructed slope for the original school construction, a combination of blast rock and process gravel. Um, we'll more than likely use that and then obviously hit it with the standard stabilized construction at the top. Okay. Um, any other questions from commission members at this point? Chuck, did you have any more? No, this is uh, <coughs> just thinking about the, um, the sediment that's going to get onto the road down in that area. Really want to take care of it. I, I think that um, as we were talking here tonight, I, I did realize that you do have a construction entrance already, and there's there's a lot of sediment still going up the hill even with that construction entrance. So same thing's going to happen over here. So you might, you know, sometimes they put bars on the ground to get the like a rumble strip or something like that to get the truck tires to really bounce some stuff off. And I thought Rebecca was going to start asking about um, spraying the tires off, but um, right now, yeah, I think you know, we have can, a plan. Right now, we don't have a. Right now, we yeah. have limited um, kind of presence on the site. I mean, we're like I said, we're doing what we can, but we have absolutely have a street sweeper that's going to be out there, and you know, it's to the school's benefit as well. That we, you know, they're using that that driveway every single day um, to make sure that we're sweeping. I just don't think that sweeping exercise has occurred yet just because of our limited, you know, we've been mobilizing equipment on site. We haven't really gone into the heavy um, site presence yet, but well, I'll make sure our, our on site guys are aware of the concern on that. Check that something too. We'll monitor <coughs> as well on a weekly basis. Yeah, no, I, I think that if you're, if you're out there and you're using the street sweeper, it's the best you can do. It does create kind of a dust plume, but, um, you know, this just you know, keep it under control. And usually when it rains, it's the big problem. So if you could just kind of figure out when it's about yeah. to pour and, yeah. and just yeah. get that street swept. Um, 
any, any questions from the public about this project? Um, just as a general comment, um, I, I'm uneasy about the proximity of the base of that um, constructed new road slope <coughs> to the wetland, um, to the wetland replication area. Um, you know, um, I don't want to see more trees lost, you know, t uprooted and replanted. Um, but I'm relying on Mr. Sullivan's expertise about, you know, compaction not being a significant issue at this, for this project. So um, that said, I guess, it, you know, um, knowing the good faith of this permit applicant um, and the fact that it's going to reduce traffic in, as a big, you know, in the big picture. I, I guess I don't have any um, serious objections to this, but I think it needs to be watched closely, and I think it needs to. Um, um, are you guys sending reports? You've started work already. Yeah. Um, are you sending and regular reports, reports <coughs> at this point? Yeah, we have. So, um, and Chuck, have you, you've gone over and scoped things out. Yeah, I have. I have. I've been over there a few times, and I, I've been very happy with the response from the crew okay. and okay. my questions and uh, so okay. so far so good okay so um, at, lots of I think at this point the Commission would need to take the following steps um, determine whether this is or should be one of three things an amended amended order of conditions a minor plan change or just an administrative action Differences being an amended order if the plan if the plan has been changed so significantly um, that you believe that a new f uh, hearing would be needed or if any of butters would be you know disenfranchised <coughs> by what's happening here uh, I don't think that's the case uh, it's all on private property uh, minor plan change um, is something that we do uh, but. You know, we could ask for some, we could ask for some um, conditions on this, and I thought maybe some of the conditions would be, would get the erosion control drawn into this plan. It's stamped by an engineer, um, and then I was going to ask that the construction schedule be updated. An administrative action, just prepare a letter and sign it um, with a vote from the commission. Well, it seems to me a minor plan change is the best way to go forward. Well, other the minor plan change does have a fee that goes along with it. You're going to waive You're going to waive the fee anyways. So <laughs> we are. <laughs> <coughs> well, it's maybe. I'm not maybe. sure. Okay. <laughs> what have you been able to read our minds? <laughs> I'm just thinking nonprofit. Um, it may be requested that the fees waived. Uh, right. Most of um, the materials here already. Okay. Um, I, I think a minor plan change is appropriate. Um, I, I do too. Okay. Allison, yeah, minor, plan yeah. minor plan change. Uh, so all those in favor of a minor plan change? Okay. Opposed? None? All right. So we'll go forward with a minor plan change. Um, and we'll ask for the erosion control to be put in. We need, a, we need an engineered stamp on this plan. Um, and a construction schedule. Yeah, <coughs> just on the with respect to the construction schedule, that that's an obligation on our part. That's kind of a you know somewhat of a fluid document right I know, now. So I understand. we're updating it. I understand. On a constant basis, and we're required to you know we're having weekly meetings with the owner. So yeah, um, as they get updated, I'll, I'll include you on. Had you the updated it uh, since the the original one? We had the pre we had a pre construction meeting internally, and then we had the one with the town. Two updates from the original. Yeah, and one or two from the original. Essentially, we've been trying to gauge when to do the um, utility work in the roadway. Um, and that's the really only thing that's changed from our original schedule is you know, okay. trying to figure out if we're going to do that February vacation week or you know when to. And then it's just so many kids on the site. We're just trying to gauge how to you know handle the traffic circulation when we get to drive. Just like you to make sure that I'm on that list of uh, 
that construction schedule because I've, I've been getting a lot of stuff on this project through Jesse Wilson, not directly from work engineering. Do you have Chuck's in contact information? Okay. Do. I also have an email from Jesse earlier okay. today saying that uh, they have no issues with this uh, proposal as well. So. Gotcha. Our so request would be that if there is a fee, that the fee be waived. Uh, it, it's not changing the real scope of the project. I think it's a simplistic change. It doesn't require a lot of uh, time to go through it. It'd be the same process, simply a, a relocation of the entranceway. And our request it is a nonprofit. <clears throat> These, of course, are expensive uh, activities on the part of the nonprofit. We request that the fee be waived. So, um, that, so it's. Um, is that the new fee? It might be a new fee or no fee, but we usually, that's <coughs> just for consideration. It, it really needs to come in writing, and I think that mm -hmm. we'll have the letter next time. Right now, if, it, if it helps. It's been done before. It's been done before. Yeah, it's <laughs> by, by the same <laughs> gentleman. Sure. Um, I, I think we've written on napkins. I think, you know, I think, I think it's um, minor change. Um, Chuck, according to the chart, it doesn't look like we do have a minor change. Minor plan change. There's, it's on the, um, hold on a second. It's all right. Looking at your review of, oh, minor project, $50. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> it's not per linear foot. <laughs> You're, you know. um, so are you withdrawing uh, the, the request to wait? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I won't anything in writing. We'll pay the $50. <laughs> We're going to Disney on that. Um, okay. Um, that said, is there any other questions from the public or <coughs> from the applicant? Um, no. Should we have a motion to issue a minor plan change? Did we already? Do we took a vote as to what which oh, way yeah. to proceed, but I don't think we took a vote as to. Why don't we take a vote to um, issue a minor plan change? With the conditions. With the conditions yeah. described today. Anybody to make a motion? Anybody? I move we accept the plan uh, as as uh, conditioned and amended by the commission tonight. I'm sorry, Second. Will you also allow me to sign it off so we can not do this at the next meeting? Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. Authorizing Chuck Thank you. For, to sign off. And seconded by Rebecca. All those in favor? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. All right. Just going to make a note to myself. Sean, so I'll I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Okay. I'm a little confused here. Oh, um, disposal site. Should we? Should, should you guys stay to talk about the disposal of the soil? I don't think they. That was a separate. That was. Is that, that is was that not part discussed. Of this, <laughs> I think we need to do some more legwork with the other town departments and one about that. Do you want to cover that under another meeting? Yeah, I mean, if there are questions. It's it's on the agenda for tonight. Um, do, would Took you a like? Look at it. Would you like a little feedback on that yeah. before you proceed? Why don't, just a couple more minutes. Sorry to um, keep you. Um, so Rebecca, we took well, we took a look I, at it. Yeah, I took we a look at it. Uh, did a site a visit. Sunday. Yep. Pretty uh, steep going down slope. Maybe this is a dumb question. What is that jurisdiction? We have uh, jurisdiction of 100 feet from a BVW, but we also have uh, uh, kind of. So this if it's BVW. It's more likely than not jurisdiction that a um, that you'll cause harm to a wetland. So it, where, even okay, outside the of 100 feet. Can you guys point yeah. out where the wetland is, please? This is the, the um, highway barn here. Yeah. Yes. So yep. Yeah. Yeah. This and this is all GIS um, yeah. mapping um, with bedding maps and. and um, like, there was a wetland here, which is on the other side of the of the um, highway barn. So the point is, they they looked at a GIS map. They didn't go out there looking for wetlands. Okay. So as part of the the commission's due diligence, I put it on the agenda and I gave you guys an address to go <coughs> out there and, and check it out. But you know, a GIS map is not going to find a vernal pool if there's one, yeah. and if there's any other things that we want to 
find out. So I'm not sure, um, and it wasn't really even a formal presentation. I hadn't been out there and asked the commission to go out there, or maybe someone knew about this spot. Uh, so that was really the reason why it was on the site visit. I can say I'm not intimately familiar with the area, but I know railroad right away is a notorious for wetlands next to them. This particular area I only know from looking over the railing there on uh, 129, and um, I can't recall any significant wet area there. That doesn't mean it's not there, um, but uh, there's also another wetland that's on the other side of 129. It's probably a little further away, and actually it's a river. Yeah. Uh, but it's well outside of 200 feet from, mm -hmm. from, what you're, from the area you're proposing. Um, so that being said, I also reviewed the GIS. Um, I, I don't see anything that, that, would, that would stop you from going forward from this initial look, but it needs to be investigated further, I think. As far as all the, the zoning stuff, yeah. that's not in our purview. Yeah. We don't want it to be. Another question. Are you, that's pretty heavily wooded. You're going to take down all the trees and then? Yeah, no, I don't think the intent would be to take all the trees down. Uh, as we've talked, there's a lot of material leaving the track and field project. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, Austin Prep owns this parcel here. And in any future development, <coughs> I don't even think they know what it is yet. Um, because of the slope and because of the prevailing site conditions, fill would have to be brought in. So the thought was simply, if we have fill that we're going to be getting rid of from one project, if we could eventually use it in the future, let's try to do that. Um, and that was kind of the question we've asked the town, and now we've kind of started this discussion on what, what it would take to do that. Um, and that's really kind of where we're at. Okay. It, it represents a significant savings to the project through the, to the school in terms of just sure. reduction in trucking alone, sure. because we're only bringing in a mile mm -hmm. or so up the street sure. versus trucking it to an off-site disposal facility. So. It sounds like at this point we cannot confirm nor deny whether there's <laughs> jurisdictional area there. And we would put the onus on you to, to show with some field evidence that it was or was not. Which is kind of challenging to do these days, like this season. Okay. So, so maybe we'll see another permit or minor. Maybe we won't have to, but, but thanks for considering our uh, input on it. And uh, keep us in the loop. Thank you. Thank All right. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Okay. Let's take up the matter of the notice of intent for 31 Curtis Street. And I'll pull out my script. Okay, we're going to the public hearing for uh, notice of intent. Is there a number on this? Do we have a file number on this? Chuck, did Jack, you? did you check your file yes, number? Yes, we did. What do we have? 270-0636. Uh, 0636? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the public hearing for notice of intent, DP number 270-0636. 31 Curtis Street, Map 4, Lot 109, O'Sullivan, is now open to being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, and the Reading General Bylaws, Section 5.7. The hearing will be conducted in the following manner. The applicant will present the proposal. The commission will receive reports from its administrator, technical advisors, and other town departments. The Commission will address questions and comments to the applicant. The public will then be given the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the Chair. Please give your name and address before your comments and our questions are presented. There's an, an attendance sheet at the door. Please sign in. Um, and at this point, would the members please introduce themselves, starting with Chuck. Uh, Chuck Taroni, Conservation Administrator. Uh, Allison Stager. Terry Sully. Frank Sullivan, Vice Chair. Anika Scanlon, Chair. Rebecca Romer. Okay, and Julie Roger, Voting <laughs> Secretary. Thank you, Julie. And just for the record, Mr. Yeah, Sullivan. For the record, my name is Jack Sullivan, I'm owner of the Sullivan Engineering Group. Okay. And I'm here tonight with Kieran O'Sullivan, who's the property owner at 31 Curtis Street. Okay. Welcome. Um, 
So basically, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of history how we got to this point. Um, Mr. O'Sullivan's looking to demolish an existing one-car garage and add a, a two-car garage to his property. Um, as part of that process, he was required to get a variance um, for, from the side yard setback. We went to the Reading Zoning Board of Appeals. They approved the variance request, um, and that decision has been recorded with the Registry of Deeds. So the next step now is to come before uh, this commission. Uh, the majority of the work takes place within a 100-foot uh, B, BBW buffer zone to a bordering vegetated wetland. Um, as I stated, the existing one-car garage will be demolished. A two-car garage will be constructed in its place. The existing um, asphalt driveway will be extended to service the two-bay two bay garage. There is one large tree that needs to come down within the 100-foot buffer zone. It's, it's either a 24-inch elm or 24-inch maple. It's a hardwood tree. And there are three uh, trees outside of the 100-foot buffer zone that will need to be taken down and removed uh, for the driveway construction for this project. Um, with the site grading for this project, the lot is, is relatively flat. Uh, the garage addition will go in such that there'll be little to no grading changes for this to go in. Um, there'll be hay bales and erosion control set up at, at the limit of work line and there's no work proposed within the 25 foot uh, no disturbance zone to the buffer zone. Um, this lot's a little bit unique and I wanted to go through the history of it and, and there, I know there'll be some questions from the commission why is there a shed in the wetland area um, so th that's why yeah th th I, that's why I want to step through the history. Mr. O'Sullivan's owned this property since the year 2000. In 2002, he added an, an addition on the northerly side of this structure. Um, Fran Fink was the agent at the time. Um, the building permit was signed off. There was no requirement to file. There was no known wetland at that time. In 2004, Mr. O'Sullivan came in for a shed permit. Same thing, got signed off, put the shed in. In fact, back in this area, you'd never know what's there now, there used to be um, an in-ground pool right in that area as well that has been filled in. Before Mr. O'Sullivan purchased the property, it had been filled in. In 2006, Mr. O'Sullivan came back to put a deck onto the rear of his property, at which time um, Fran asked that a minor project request be submitted. What had happened is on the property next door, there had been a project, there were some wetlands. It must have triggered that there could possibly be wetlands on this property. She went out to investigate. She, in, in, in the minor project approval, it stated that the wetland line was right beyond the existing stockade fence that I show on my plan and basically where the wetland, wetland line is shown on this fence. So Mr. O'Sullivan had gone through the process he should. He, he, he obtained all permits for the addition, for the shed, for the deck. Um, and so the, sh the shed was constructed with a permit in 2004. There's sauna tubes that go down over four feet into the ground. Um, so that's some of the history of, uh, on how this developed. It was kind of a bit of a strange site in that for years there was no wetland to be known, but now this, you know, you can see it takes up a good portion of his rear yard. Um, so I'm sure we'll have discussion on that. Um, the, the rest of the area, we're not proposing any work within the 25-foot buffer zone. There is a play area. Um, he has three children. Uh, they have landscape timbers with wood chips with a, with a play structure um, <coughs> that currently sits within the 25-foot no disturbance zone as well. Um, as part of the Zoning Board of Appeals process, I encourage Mr. O'Sullivan to go around to any of the direct abutters to him to try to gain support or to, to take any questions or concerns they might have. Um, he, he obtained over 25 signatures from, from abutters in support of the project. In speaking with one of the neighbors, downgrading of this property, and I, I think the town's working on some sort of project now, there have been some drainage concerns um, on, on our own before we even came to this commission. It is part of the decision with the Zoning Board of Appeals, too, even though it didn't apply to, to a zoning issue. We're proposing a thousand gallon dry well to be installed. That'll capture the entire roof runoff from the, the, the two car garage addition. Um, quick question on that. Is that going to be a tank? Is that going to be? It'll be a tank. It'll be a precast concrete tank with cr crushed stone surrounding. Okay. It'll be a shallow jumbo 1,000 gallon dry well. 
because we know we have a high groundwater table on this site as well. Okay. So th these jumbo dry wells um, basically like uh, two feet, 10 inches deep. Yes. So, so gotcha. it should work, yeah. Quick, quick question, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, do you happen to have the, the page two from the uh, notice of intent form? I did, I provided, Chuck actually called me this morning and said if we could bring in some additional copies. They, okay. they were submitted with the original, out. but we don't know what happened, but we did bring in copies. For whatever reason. Yeah. Good to see you. All right, thanks. And I'll, I'll I'm turn. Sorry to try. You didn't. I'm, I'm, I'm basically done. So I, um, okay. I'll, I'll turn over to the commission for any questions you might have on this project. Do you have it? Um, at this point, uh, any questions from the commission? Uh, I have one quick question. The, the proposed brick paver walkway, is that going to go up to the pavement of the driveway or just stop in the middle of the lawn? I guess I'm confused as to where the driveway actually is. This is the edge of the driveway here, so okay. that it will go in. There's an existing pavement here right now to to his steps here. Okay. This see with this purple. Okay, areas. so you're only removing a little bit. Okay. We're removing. So you're adding the orange. Yeah. So we're, we're stripping okay. all the pavement from here to the house, but there'll be room and seed in this area, and then this area here will be the the, okay. the brick patty, the okay. brick pavers. Okay. Okay. Um. So just to sort of back up, so the shed was put in before, was put in in 2004. Correct. Um, because Fran, was that, was that sort of the minor project that Fran? 2006, so I, I have all the permits minor. here, but in 2006 the minor project was issued for the deck. Okay. At that time okay. the shed was in place. Gotcha. Fran missed it, Lawson had been there. Well, it's, it's interesting because I, I, uh, she doesn't miss anything. I'm familiar with um, one of the residents uh, um, on the street, and I, yeah, <laughs> I know it's wet back there. Right. You know, um, you know, but wet versus wetland, you things, know, and things must have changed. technically calling it wetland. Um, so, um, let me just ask. So. It was, I did have I did have a question bear with me um, is there any um, we did get your letters of support that's must have must have been it's nice to know that people are willing to support you for that um, um, and putting the dry well in the front of the house would that capture the garage runoff correct Okay. And, and the reason I put it in the front is it's a higher elevation as opposed to the, the rear yard, so it will give yes. us a little more separation. Yes, and there houses. isn't much slope in the, on that street at all. Right. So, so it's it's going to be kind of a challenge. Um, I'm going to jump around a little bit. Um, so, um, Mr. Sullivan, um, you it said that um, your group delineated the wetlands in the back? Correct. What methods were used to delineate? Um, I looked at vegetation and soils. I didn't go beyond the stockade fence into his rear yard to see if they extended. When Fran approved the minor project request, she said the line was right at the stockade fence and mm -hmm. the stockade fence position okay. hasn't changed. Okay. How do you access the shed? There's a small gate there. There's a small gate right there. It is. At the, at the point. Um, and what's and just for the sake of knowing, what's stored in the shed? What type of children's items? bikes and stuff? Ski, children's bicycles, yeah. ski, ski equipment, skis, boots. Any gasoline or motor oil or anything like that? Just, just no. innocuous no. gear. Okay. Um, um, what else was I going to ask? Um, uh, any um, thoughts of? replacing the tree, the 24-inch elm, that's within the 100-foot buffer, um, would it, you be? Actually, no. Rebecca asked me what kind of a tree it was when mm -hmm. she did the side visit, and I went back to my records, and I had Fitzgerald, that tree, give it, that's, they, they, they said it was a maple, actually. Did so they say what kind? It wasn't, they didn't say it. Oh, no. okay. No. Just curious. Yeah. So it's one of those beautiful Norway's. 
be no. nice to buy. <laughs> okay. Um, um, at this point, you know, um, the shed being put in before knowing it was wetlands, um, if it's, is it, it, it's on sonotubes? Yeah, but I should clarify there, it wasn't a question that it was put in before I knew it was wetlands. I had actually come into town hall and I was talking to Rebecca about it on Sunday. I had actually come into town hall and checked to see if there was wetlands there. And I was told that there wasn't. And you asked me when that was, and I looked up my chain of emails with the previous administrator, and it was November of 2001. So everything that I have done it has was been about board. I haven't gone around any department or anything. <coughs> I, I, I came in and I got clearance that there was no wetlands there. wasn't an issue. And so I went with that assumption. Yeah. And like Jack said, it was 2006 yeah. when we done the deck. Yeah. And I even have the permit from the deck and I have the letter from Fran after she done the inspection and that so that time. So. Well, let me just ask the question. With the expanded garage, is there a need for that additional storage space of that shed? I would still have a need because I have three children and we have a couple of cars. And the other thing is it, it would be a hardship in a couple of ways. It's a financial hardship to have to pay somebody to come in and remove it. Uh, I don't think it would be just to do that. I mean, up until this point, I've actually 8,000 plus dollars spent on this project and I haven't picked up a shovel yet to do the foundation. Now, yeah. and I realize it. I'm just making the point that it's already run a lot of money. And this was a garage project that started out with a quote of $32,000 to build. And I have 8,000, even I think Chuck was surprised when I told him that the Ready Chronicle last September asked me for $475 for a tiny legal notice. Now, and I've had all, had all the expenses recorded. And I'm not exaggerating what this has cost. Now, I think it's kind of obscene actually that a $32,000 project, I'm already at 8,000 and I have not actually paid for the building permit yet. And I know that there has been some discussion with fees. Sometimes I watch some of the meetings with regard to fee increases and everything. Well, for a small key, I pay $7,100 in tax. My taxes went up in January. So I'm just making the point that, you know, that, that there's a perception, I think, sometimes that everyone who lives in the town is, must be well off. I work for the Archdiocese. My salary is public information. I make 18,000 a year, so not everyone in town makes a quarter of a million. And so it, there has to be recognition that people with young families have bills, and a lot of us are going one to month. Yeah, this yeah. is also a project that went through the Zoning Board of Appeals. It, yeah. it's, that's a more expensive process. I mean, that's the $400. Um, I realize that, Chuck, but I, I'm just making the point that a two car garage. It's going to cost me thirty-two thousand. It shouldn't. I shouldn't already be gone through eight thousand to get there. Yeah. And if you're talking about making me take down the shed, the shed cost me twenty-five hundred. I had to pay a contractor to come in and dig six holes for the sonnet tubes. I had to go down six foot. So that was another fifteen hundred. So that's. Yeah. You know, no, so I understand. Some it goes sheds on are. And on, you know? Some sheds are on cinder blocks. Some, yeah. some are. You know, I don't yeah. know. Now, I, I wouldn't go you know, to the site. I think I Mr. Redman told me to do the sonnet tubes. I always got, yeah, yeah. you know, his input on things along the way. So yeah. I think more would be too invasive. I think it would be more harm than help. Well, I, I guess I wouldn't have as big an objection to leaving the shed there, especially with the history of the project, as long as it is very clear that no hazardous materials at all are kept in the shed. Yeah. You know, and I'm I'm glad to hear that there aren't right now. There are no batteries. No. Um, no. <laughs> No oil, no lawn mowers, no, you know. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah there'd um, be no fertilizers, no herbicides. No fertilizers, no herbicides. Nothing that, that w could be um, a pollutant to the wetlands. Yeah. Um, besides that, does anybody else have any questions from the commission? Nope, oh, hearing that. I, I have a comment. Go ahead. Um, I'm just wondering after 
14 years of getting this wetland line wrong, the commission um, would like to finally find out where it actually falls. Uh, By requesting that, you know, you get the wetland line surveyed in by a certified well scientist. As part of the project? Yeah. Um, for the purpose of putting it on our mapping system? And for the purpose of finding out if we are 35 feet away. For the purposes of finding out if the shed is 25 feet into the wetland. Um, it makes a difference. A homeowner can still get a variance for a project that's, you know, closer than 35 feet. Um, Again, we're assuming a, a lot here, and what I heard from Jack is that Fran said that the um, wetland line is right on the stockade fence, but he's drawn it a foot back. Wetlands begin directly behind fence I, I, with, I with Fran's writing. Fran think was very definite about which when she done, came out and done the inspection for the deck permit in 2006, she was very definite about where the wetlands line was. Mm -hmm. and. I think you have a letter there and somewhat attached to that permit. Yeah, that it's the wetlands line is behind the fence and in the wood. Yeah, she 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 wrote it in her handwriting right on the minor project approval. Well, I have a question, Mr. Sullivan. Mm -hmm. Did you? I think Annika asked you if you had done the delineation. It looks like you did a delineation in 2000 August. Correct. I'm not a wetland scientist, though, so Chuck's right on that point. Okay. So you didn't. So you didn't identify the what the uh, hydrophytic I, vegetation. I didn't fill out the DEP soil forms or anything like that. I, I basically I came in, met with Chuck, got some of the history on the project, saw in 2006 where the line was. The fence hadn't moved. It really doesn't affect anything moving forward. It's right behind the fence. I'm, I'm not saying it's 15 feet off the fence. I'm within a foot or two of the fence. Um, so you based it on on what was described previously? Is that? I worked with okay. Fran for a long time, and she was very detailed. So. Did she have any information about what the vegetation and the soils were? I know when she went out to look at wetlands, she'd go out to auger soils, look at vegetation. Then in her own notes, that, that's what I basically judged it on. We may have the notes. I mean, I found Fran to be pretty accurate. Uh, I'm only, I only bring up that point, you know, just to, because the, usually when, when Jack's coming in, we have a certified, you know, he's, he's adopted other people's line and brought it into on his own plan it was a certified line or was a you know a more major project this happens to be a very flat area and it, it's hard to tell I think the shed is is definitely in the back and how far in the back is it and how'd that happen um, you know may, may matter but with that being said you're really not going any closer to the wetland with any of this project I just thought that since we keep on bringing up this line from Fran Fink way back in 2001, at some point we really need an official line here and what project are we going to use, um, you know, our authority to have that happen. But, but if you do that, you're, you're, you're also adding more cost to this project. And, and let, me, let me play a devil's advocate. If the line is shown in the middle of the grass area, what are we going to do? Are we going to... Well, I don't know what you guys are going to do. Uh, but are we going to change the project? Are we not going to deny the project? Is it going to change the outcome of this of this notice of intent if it's in the middle of the grass area? It should. Are but, we going to are we going to tell them to stop mowing the lawn? We don't usually. No, but it might it might. Um, look, I don't know what you guys are going to do, but to assume. I, I'm not. I'm just bringing that up. You guys right, can do whatever right, you want. I right, mean, right, right. to me, it's it's pretty much exactly where the existing house is. The guy needs mm -hmm. a two-car garage. Um, we should figure out a way to have it happen. But the line hasn't been um, verified, and will will it make a difference? I think there's more steps. I, I just I re just really think that any time you do something, you need to go through the process, mm -hmm. not just assume that we're going to get whatever the final result is. We, how do we get there? Let's just skip through the regulation. 
I mean, um, had it been anybody but Fran, I might be suspect. Um, the fact that it's existing lawn now, there's a house there, they live there, they use the yard. Oh, um, no, it's just yeah. I was, in the They're future, not, yeah. I'm going to say every time you say something about Fran, I'll just say, yeah, but what about 31 Curtis Street with that uh, <laughs> shed out in the middle of the wetlands? <laughs> Uh, I just, I just so what, what were you saying about Fran's line? <laughs> I just think that I just think that uh, um, I don't think the outcome would be any different. And you know, if, if this was a vacant lot, and they, you know, or, or if, they, if, if he was proposing to move the, the foundation back towards the wetland line, that's a whole different thing. Um, but the plan as proposed, you know, I don't think it's going to change very much if, if we decide that the line, or we find that the line's in the middle of the grass area, it just makes. The applicant spend more money. Well, I, I think to Chuck's point, uh, you know, our job is to try and make a determination based on the proximity, on knowing where the resource area is. And if there's doubt as to where the resource area is, um, and and that factors into our judgment, then you know we need to know where the resource area really is. And I think that's a valid point. Um, uh, my my understanding is what Mr. Sullivan um, mapped out based on his observations is roughly, according to my scale ruler here, you know, within two feet of that stockade fence. Um, and if and if the wetland line is the six foot stockade fence, which it sounded like Fran was insinuating, based on the notes then that means the existing garage is within the 200 foot, is within the 25 foot um, zone. Is that right? No. No, it's 35. Well, actually, then maybe, it wouldn't even be within the 35. It wouldn't even be within the 35, like yeah. Right at the edge. Well, then the, deck would be in the, well, then the copy of the plan I have is not 1 to 20. So, yeah. Um, anyway. Um, either way, you know, it's not... I think your plan is scaled down. I'm sorry, Mika. No, that's okay. I'm I, I think my to original was I an 11 by 17, and just looking at one member's plan, it's either... Three and a half by 11. So yeah, it's definitely scaled down. Let's see. Down. Yeah, it looks like one to three, but okay. Yeah, so if it's one to 30, then um, the 35 foot... Is that right? Sorry. Give me a second. Yeah about that, then that means the 35 foot. I'm just looking at this map, look, the stockade is less distance from the wetlands than the 35 is from yeah, the garage. So close, even right? if it moves it up, be, it's not yeah. kind of Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. So the stockade fence, according to, so it looks like the stockade fence is 35 feet to the back of the existing car garage. Um, right. Which still puts us outside of the right, right, right. Um, and, and typically, this commission knows. Usually, I hire a wetland scientist for my projects. In this case, where I went back on the history, saw this, saw it was the fence line that hadn't changed. I wasn't going to charge him money to have a mm -hmm. botanist yeah. come out. I just mm -hmm. kind of use yeah. that line yeah. as, as a good line. Yeah. And right now we're probably not going to be able to verify that line until April, mm -hmm. you know, so it, which would, he's trying to get the architect to finish up his plans as well so he can construct in the spring. Can I just, can I just, for the sake of the neighborhood, are you, um, if you leave South Street and turn on to Curtis, you know what I'm saying? Are you on the right or the left? I'm on the left. You're on the left, pretty close to the turn? Yeah. From South Street, pretty right. close to, closer to South Street than Walnut. Yes, yeah, okay. just one, one house down. One house down, yeah. okay. Um, okay. Um, I did mention to Rebecca about the tree that I have no problem setting another tree uh, yeah. to replace the one. Okay. That um, trees during the spring and summer also do take up a lot of water from the ground. So that could help some of the backyard wet issues as well. Um, of course, you know, you're going to lose a big one on a mature tree, so it'll take a while for a newly planted tree to take root. 
Except the Norway maples. Except the Norway maples. Take her wherever they are. Norway maples are invasive. I have a beautiful one in my yard. Uh, I wish I didn't, but um, they're invasive and they literally uh, poison the soil around the tree to prevent any native species from growing. So I'd like to see them gone if at all possible. Um, it's so important, Rebecca, you would lose too much of the snow on the ground on Sunday morning so you, weren't, you couldn't see anything. Again, so. no. But it was pretty flat. It is flat. It's like two or three feet now, the, whole, the whole side. So, so this is the wetland area, um, and there's forest back there. There's forest back there. I, you know, in some instances I'll see, you know, sensitive fern, and I, like, oh. even in the winter. Yeah, I yeah. could see that yeah. uh, at the Zani's property, but I didn't see anything like that. And um, the one on Sunny Side is definitely, you know, a drop off to uh, open water. Running water, so you can definitely see that. Yeah, but this one is it's flat. And, um, so at this point, um, I think the first item to sort of decide on is what's the commission's opinion about the wetland line? Are we going? Um, are people willing to accept the wetland line as it is? Um, I would think because even if it's off two feet, it's not going to impact this piece of the garage. So um, it is, it is. I'm You're willing I, to, I want to accept, accept it as is? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I am as well. Um, so that said, um, are there any questions at all from the public? Or neighbors? No? Um, is there a vote? Anybody want to make a motion? I think that just sounds like discussion's pretty much up, so I will entertain a motion. I move we accept the uh, plan and issue and order conditions on the notice of intent. 431 Curtis Street. Second. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Um, so at this point, sounds. Um, do we need any additional information? Otherwise, we can close this notice of intent and go over the order of conditions next meeting. Does anybody need any additional information? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Okay. At this point, motion to close the notice of intent. Uh, we need a motion to close the public hearing. Closing the public hearing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I move to close the public hearing for 31 cars. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor? Okay. And we will draft the order of conditions at the next meeting. Okay. Thank you okay. very much. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. No more beer? I know I got rid of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My girls were happy when I got rid of it. Okay, notice of intent for 87 Sunnyside Avenue. Is there a DP number for this? Um, 0637. 0637. That makes sense. No. 0637. So the public hearing for DP number 270 0637. 87 Sunnyside Avenue, map 11, lot 88. O'Sullivan is now open to being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended, and the Reading General Bylaws Section 5.7. The applicant will present their proposal. The Commission will receive reports from its administrator, technical advisors, and other town departments. The Commission will address questions and comments to the applicant. The public will then be given the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant which should be directed to the chair. Please give your name and address before your questions are presented. Um, there's an attendance sheet. I want to make sure everyone's signed in at the front door. At this time, would the members of the Conservation Commission please introduce themselves, starting with Chuck. 
Uh, Chuck Caroni, Conservation Administrator. Terry Selling. Brian Sullivan, Vice Chair. Anika Scanlon, Chair. Rebecca Longley. Julie Roger, Reporting Secretary. Okay, for the record, please introduce yourself. Good evening. I'm Elizabeth Wallace from Hayes Engineering. I'm here with uh, David O'Sullivan, the uh, and owner of uh, Sunnyside Property. Um, we are here with some property renovations. Um, currently, uh, there is a bordering vegetated wetland, which I have flagged that is around the uh, backyard of the property. Um, there's a perimeter fence around the backyard. Uh, there's a pool uh, with concrete apron uh, inside the, the yard, plus a uh, play area, lawn play area. Uh, there is a house and driveway. The driveway goes into the garage. Uh, the uh, activities uh, that are being proposed are uh, three, uh, two buildings will be added to uh, the house. Um, an area of pavement will be added to the driveway uh, to access the new garage. Uh, they'll be rebuilding the uh, shed that's there. The shed is actually on cinder blocks. Uh, a new fence is going to be added uh, between the new screen porch and the shed, uh, defining uh, the pool area and the play area. <coughs> um, uh, a paper walkway uh, is going to be um, added between the new screen porch and the pool concrete apron. Um, they're also going to be uh, doing some tree work uh, just to protect uh, the structures that are within the yard. Uh, a group of uh, three trees are going to be removed from the uh, uh, easterly end. Um, tree limbs are going to be uh, trimmed from trees um, overhanging the pool and the fence. Uh, the fence is going to be repaired or replaced. Um, right now it's in fairly poor shape, uh, so uh, some sections may be uh, uh, repaired or replaced. Um, <clears throat> a portion of the uh, fence and the shed will be within 25 feet of the wetland. Uh, the shed uh, and the fence are going to be within 35 feet. Uh, trees uh, which are going to be worked on are also going to be within um, 25 feet of the wet one. Uh, so uh, it's a number of uh, activities, but uh, they're all in areas that are um, occupied by uh, uh, existing disturbances. So. <coughs> is my opinion that I um, just wanted to add, I did bring a couple of pictures that might help people. The first three are kind of showing the yard. The second two are showing where the house, uh, the garage addition is going in the back, and the porch is tucked into the side. Non-snowy pictures. What? Non-snowy pictures. Right, non-snowy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm David O'Sullivan. I'm like Alice. Welcome. Mary. Um, we bought property last spring. Um, and have been doing some work on it. And basically the house has no basement or attic and no storage, so we're trying to add a garage. So we can okay. Have some storage okay. And That's you'll tough. see the condition of the shed that's kind of falling in. The shed presently has um, some lawn stuff in it and has the pool equipment. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, are there any questions from the commission? I have a couple questions, but go ahead. The three, the three trees that you're removing along the eastern side beyond the fence, yeah. what kind of trees are those? Would you 
Do you know the Do you know the size of those trees? You know, are we talking small trees? Are we talking it's, large? It's a clump of three trees that probably vary from three to five inch diameter. So it's a cluster. Yeah, it's a cluster. Of trees. Okay. And they basically hang kind of there and come leaning over towards the, the pool and the, and the house. Mm. And there's the one birch in the middle of the yard that um, was once a small decorative birch. That's now a, 30 foot high stick. Yeah, I saw that. The reason for putting the fence down the middle is we have dogs and mm -hmm. we don't really want the dogs in the pool. Right, um, right. Is that birch yeah, Is that know. birch in poor health? or it's No, just, it's actually it's kind of good health, but mm -hmm. it's just tall and lanky straight up. And um, I think it was put as a decorative small birch and it's just way overgrown. Kind of taking over. Be. Right, and it, because it's only about five or six feet from the Pool, it's constantly filling the pool leaves. Yeah, um, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, so when you arrived um, at the property, when you bought the property, what was your knowledge about the wetlands? I was aware there was wetlands back there. Um, you were aware you were? I, I was aware. You were aware. I was aware. Okay. I was actually surprised at the extent that it wrapped around the house and knew those wetlands yeah. behind it. So I had actually had hoped to do something more for a garage, but this fits in within the 35-foot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so okay. I didn't quite get as much as I'd hoped when I first looked at the site, but I kind of abide by the regulations. So. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go through my questions, if, if that's all right, and then I'll open up to other commission members. Um, the uh, proposed screen porch in the write-ups was requiring that the AC unit be re relocated. Um, where was that going to get relocated to? Just going to be on the corner of the porch. Just on the corner yeah. of the porch. Okay. So no. Okay. No, it moves. It moves maybe ten feet. Okay. Um, and so um, maybe this is more a question for you. Um, what happens to the wetland line east of wetland flag fifteen? Uh, it actually uh, continues along uh, towards the uh, property line uh, in the... It just sort of goes straight towards just, the property yeah, line? Yeah, straight towards the property how, line. How did you evaluate that? Uh, I sort of eyeballed... Oh, the wetland line or... No, no, that, that sort of um, extrapolation. Uh, I, I eyeballed it when I was out there. Um, I actually stopped there because... Uh, uh, the, I thought I was closer to the uh, property line than I was. Uh, oh, based oh, on I the see. Structure on, on the other side, the uh, the neighbor. Uh, yep, these property lines, they're not, yeah. they're not really out there in the no. real world mm -hmm. so clearly. And, and it's all woods. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, would that the line were a physical. Right, right. There, Sometimes they are. But, um, uh, um, okay. Um, other question I had was. Um, um, so this existing shed is on concrete um, blocks, right? Is, is there a way, since it's being rebuilt, um, is there a way to move it outside, conveniently move it outside of the 35 foot? Well, actually all the pool equipment and all the pipes for the pool go into the end of the shed and the pool, is, pool equipment is in the, in the shed as it stands now. So, so, so there's underground piping from the pool that goes up through right. the ground to and that shed. Electric that runs through the yard and comes into the into, into the, the shed. Uh, shed. So this, yeah, yeah. So that that's yeah. okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, um, and is there any thought about um, replacing trees that are going to be removed? Um, are you amenable to that? It's something we do typically ask well, for if there's basically everything trees. inside. Outside of the fence, <coughs> those trees. So I mean, I mean, there's no place to put trees. I guess. Oh, I, mean, I see. We've got several large trees in our front yard. We have, you know, we don't have much wall on at all. So I mean, I don't know where we can put trees in this property. Okay. <laughs> well, with the the three, the cluster of three that are being removed, they're fairly small. Um. And and they basically kind of crowd around, lean. 
towards the house. That's why I was concerned yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, what other questions do I have? Were there any other questions from the commission while I'm... Some of the tree branches, if you look at that for the shed, there's a couple of branches right down on the shed. Yeah, I'm going to take a look at the... I'm going to take a look at the... So, so those are just, you know, from inside the fence, we'd be taking down a few. Uh, yeah. And the fence has got some areas. Uh, the posts all seem to be pretty solid, but a lot of the panels were rotted and falling apart. I believe, from what I can gather, it was probably the whole thing was put in in the 80s sometime. Okay. Okay. I see why you have no basement. Yes. The, lo the locust map is shown right on a wetland. <laughs> <laughs> and it's probably built on a wetland. That's probably what happened. Um. Okay, cider house for addition. Any other questions from the commission at this point? Chuck, did you have any questions? Uh, no, I think you touched on the trees. I think the, the proposal is within a, an existing fence. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. 25 foot, no disturb. I didn't. I was wondering what's, you know, between the back of the garage and and the pool, which would be the east. The property is that grass. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that the yeah. The, um, yeah. the picture that I showed looking towards the shed is probably standing where the back where the garage would be. Like yeah. the yeah. Oh, Chuck. That's that's that's, that's kind of area. What goes right up to the inside the fence is all like that. It's that back corner. Okay. Um. Any other questions, Chuck? At this point. No. No. Any questions from the public? Yeah. Yes, well, please, for the that. record, just state your name yeah, and address. Uh, Des and Trisha Conti will live at 89 Sunnyside Ave, the property Hi. directly to the left. Great. We have a question really about the drive, the size of the driveway and the grading of the driveway and how that's going to slope into our property. It looks like on, on that map it's almost right going right down the property line and how far down it's going to go. It's very near the property line. Uh, it's about 15 feet. Square feet uh, of pavement, and it's just going to add on to the present driveway. Um, it's going to be at uh, at grade. I don't believe it's going to because uh, uh, the, the be ground radically right now slopes uh, slope. significantly down. Are you staying with that, or are you going to build that? The, the garage floor is going to be lower than the present driveway, so the, the garage is going to be a step down from the house. So mm -hmm. basically, the, the sidewalk level that will walk along the side of our house yeah. is just that driveway level. That's the level of the driveway that's going to be there. And so it keeps kind of going out, kind of towards yeah. the, the great. What they're talking about the great kind of starts here and goes back this way down. So this is actually dropping down to the garage. So we're going to keep pretty much the existing great. Water will still keep going on down, kind of into the towards the wetland area on the driveway. So it's not going to like pitch it towards your house. Off down towards the house. <laughs> no. So, so between the garage and the the road, the driveway slopes down towards the garage. Right now, the garage, the driveway is perfectly level. It is, yeah. But the new piece of driveway will slope down, follow the grade, which, as you go to the left of my house, towards theirs, and there's kind of a a so bowl between the two houses. Oh, the bowl. So, so then, the other property east. goes back up again. Their property goes a little back up, again. but probably not. I mean, that whole area down there goes down there towards the wetlands. There. So I have a walkway along the side of my garage right now, by the side of my house, end of my oh, house. Yeah. So that is about three <laughs> steps down from the present house, and that's where I'm pretty much garage side. What's the elevation difference in floors? Between the garage and the, the new garage and the existing slab, it's about 18 inches. Oh, okay. I couldn't tell on the drawings there. Yeah. Beyond my visual range. <laughs> yeah, the drawings are kind of small. But if you kind of look at the plans I included in it, you can see that I kind of did three steps down from the house. Oh, okay. Yeah. The uh, floor plan, sure. Yeah, the floor plan. So is yeah. your contention that the new driveway the runoff is going to go down into your property and not flow over. Right. I mean, right now my driveway tilts towards the property line. It does. And it will continue that way to just follow that grade.
Um, I had some questions about, um, in the application, you made a request for variance um, from the 25 foot and the 35 foot setbacks. Um, the shed you made? For the shed and the fence. And for the and fence. And for the trees. Um, yeah, so um, I was looking into, a, just to refresh myself for this meeting, looking into the regs. In order to get a variance, there has to, we have to find that, the commission has to find that there are no reasonable conditions or alternatives um, to what is proposed. Um, and for the shed, the fact that the piping coming up there is, is um, sufficient mm -hmm. to me, for me. Um, and it's um, existing. And it's existing. Um, mitigating measures are proposed to create no adverse impact. Um, and the variance is necessary to accommodate a public interest. And in the case of a residence, um, we officially say in our regs that mitigation that improves the resource area quality, uh, and improves the habitat quality, uh, may fulfill the public interest piece of that variance request. So we have those three stipulations. Um, so, so in in my opinion, um, the first one that there's no reasonable alternatives um, that seems reasonably to be met. That's just my opinion. I don't know about the rest of the commission. Um, um, mitigating measures. Um, I don't see any mitigating measures proposed uh, for this work. Um, Let's discuss that for a second. Do you, are there well, I felt that there weren't really any opportunities to uh, uh, mitigate. Usually I recommend to our clients that they put in an extra tree or, or some shrubs or um, uh, naturalizing seed. Uh, but uh, everything's so uh, shady out there that um, I don't think that anything that you planted would grow very well. Um, I mean, you could put in, uh, you know, some hostas or something, but that's not really naturalizing. Well, well, there's a, a lot of things that were were encouraging and asking people to do is a range of things, from planting new native species that are shade tolerant and water tolerant. Um, and uh, there are certain nurseries that are that I've visited that that can accommodate that condition. Um, and and on the flip side, there's also the um, management of invasives. Mm -hmm. um, it was hard to tell from the photographs, but <clears throat> I th thought there was a potential for some invasives um, coming through. Such as what? Um, Thought I saw some vining things, There's but you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so you know, that could be that could be considered some some proposed um, invasive management could be considered mitigation. Um, I mean, the other thing I was going to say is, I mean, we we along the back of the fence in that back corner, yeah, on the left of the shed is just kind of a wasteland of stuff. Yeah. And if you wanted us to kind of suggest putting in some planting along there, it's not really lawn. It's kind of just a mess of stuff. Yeah. So I, I have no off. trouble. Yeah. You know, I have no trouble. I don't, you know, that area back in there, if you wanted us to put uh, like a buffer along the edge of the fence and some kind of suggested okay. plants, that's fine too. Well, that, that would be, that, that would really do two things. It would fulfill your mm -hmm. mitigation obligation, but it could also start to match the conditions and be a really air, an area of good native growth in your yard yep. which will improve your yard, yeah, your yard you too easily so do, you know five or six feet along the edge of the fence and if grass isn't growing there other but plants are probably it, better suited. i mean the, no <laughs> one is taking care of the yard for a long time so yeah. the yard yeah. is mostly yeah. just all weeds and mess yeah. right now and the there are a bunch of vines that came in from the wetlands that were kind of scattered around the mm -hmm. Thing. I tried to unearth the fence a little bit because it's yeah. falling apart. So. In my experience, a lot of vines are invasive. Yeah, yeah. I tend to think so. Too. So, um, <laughs> and, and we've got. Yeah, nature. We, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we've got 
we've got some methods that we've used. Um, Chuck has a list of native plants that are wetlands friendly. Okay. Um, you know, and you can go to some nurseries. I mean, I'm thinking mm -hmm. just off the top of my head. I'm not trying to advertise for them at all, but um, I've had some great experience with uh, Mahoney's on 2A um, in Winchester, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know where it's Yeah, um, there's, I, I actually went there and I said, I want to find some native plants to put in my, my yard because it seems like all I've got in my mm -hmm. yard is invasive. So, so I need something tolerant. And somebody said, they said, go see, you know, this woman down there. And I did. And she said, well, you have a Norway maple? I said, yeah. She said, here, this is the ground cover you want. It's native. It'll tolerate it. It'll start to take over. So I was like, you know, it doesn't cost a lot of extra money, and you get some help that fits your problem. Yeah, I mean, we're so. going to have to work on that whole lawn area. Okay. Okay. Uh, some well, if you're amenable native, to that. Native species along the fence line inside the craft area. A couple of shrubs yeah. and some ground yeah. cover. Uh, we want to do something there anyways. What's the width? Two foot by within the 25 foot area, you could probably do down one side. Mm -hmm. I don't want to create any work from you guys, but um, if you well, are proposing kind of something, the, I mean, the left, we're basically saying kind of left of the fence, over, I mean, the left of the shed over. I mean, kind of this, I mean, I'm kind of saying, no, I'm kind of saying this down in here, just this area here. Yeah, I mean, this the grass goes pretty much up to the fence here. So what's what's the thought of the commission? Thirty. Yeah, I think no, that that, that works well. Um, Thirty foot. That's a good L shape. Yeah. Thing by this is what it is. Um, that's right. right here. Yeah. I would I would suggest. I mean, it seems like this habitat. Do you know what those vines are? Oh, a lot of it is uh, bittersweet. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. What about yeah. just yes. requesting that it goes out into the back area since he wants such a big lawn and just cutting those bittersweet vines once a year? That would be great. Yeah. Whatever you can get to. That would be great. I have no problem with it. Yeah. Just you don't even have to rip them down. Right. They're easy to cut down. Yeah. Yeah. That would be great. So it's going to end up killing everything back there. Yeah. yeah, it is. They really take over. No, I I see some of the trees that are back in the. Uh, in the fall, I see them on the highway. That's oh, brutal. <laughs> They're starting to really take over on the highway too. Um, well, I mean, we'll be put some you know native planting along the fence and <coughs> try to keep the bittersweet. That would be under control. <laughs> Yearly cutting, yeah. yearly yeah, cutting of bittersweet, would, and they grow at a fantastic rate. I know. So, <laughs> so, um, so if you're amenable to that, I. Um, what was the final? It was it just the bittersweet, or is it the uh, some I'll buffer put, strip? We'll put some native plant yeah. buffer along the fence. A couple of plantings. Yeah. How about like two bushes, or at least two bushes bush and. There, right? Or that's over, um, is that overhang from the? Might be overhang. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's because we it sounds it. like you're having trouble with trees. Yeah. yeah. You know, so we don't want to plant more trees because you're just going to have to cut them. By all the vines too, in, yeah. in the in, in the way back beyond beyond the fence. The fence. It's just like a jungle back. Here. Well, get to what you can yeah. get yeah. to. You know, so within the. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to go, if yeah. you want to go crazy, that's all right. <laughs> It's all right. We can use all the help we can get, you know, and the, and the better those get managed, the more effective the wetlands are going to function. It's all going to work better. So, um, so I think the only other thing I wanted to um, mention was maybe uh, I'd, I'd really like to see that proposed siltation control sort of extend out um, to the property line next to um, I'm sorry, Conti. sir, I forgot. Uh, the Conti's. Conti's. The Conti's house. I mean, it looks like it stops a little bit. Um, if you could just yeah, do a well, right angle, yeah. a straight line towards there. Towards the property. Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, just to make sure, especially if things are sloping that way. And it, it does sound like all that, the uh, sheet flow is going to come off the driveway and then there was a swale or something it's, between it's the two houses. It's kind houses. of a low... Low area between the two houses, basically. It was so unlikely to come out the other okay. side and head towards the Conti's house? No, no, it, it just goes back up a little bit. All right, because that would be 
good stuff to go into the moment. I agree. Okay, I, I can't think of any other conditions that we should talk about. Any other questions or comments? <coughs> no? Any from the public or you? No? Okay, hearing none, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to issue a order of conditions. I move we issue an order of conditions on the notice of intent for 87, Sun 87 Sunnyside Island. With conditions with as? With conditions as discussed at the meetings. Okay. A second that. Okay, all those in favor? Okay. All right, so at the next meeting, we will um, review the order of conditions and hopefully sign off on it that night. And uh, thanks for coming Thank in. Um, oh, what's the date of your next meeting, please? The 11th. The 11th. 11th. Yep. Thank you. Um, and a motion to close the, the hearing. I move, I move we close the hearing for 80, 87 Sunnyside. Okay. okay. I'll I, that. All right, all those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for coming in. Okay. Okay. I think uh, next we'll take up the business of West Street. West Street dewatering. West Street dewatering, Howard Street, Oak Street, whatever you want to. I'm Jerry Sheehan, Mass Water Resource Authority, and here with Corey Barrett from MWRA. Mark Camper from Caliaco, the contractor. Kevin and Bill from FSNT, the consultant from Burlington. Okay. And I don't know, I brought some pictures on the thumb drive. I don't know if the last meeting. You can what do you say, Chuck? Can we do that? No problem. Okay. Let's get this going. For those members that weren't here at the last meeting, we had <coughs> some of the RCC written <coughs> Can you just. Um, Briefly tell us if any work was done uh, for stream cleanup this week, or or um, um, on on Monday. Uh, do you want me to go through? I'll go through the whole. Why thing. don't you? I'll, I'll go through the whole thing because okay. that way um, everybody can hear it. At the last meeting when um, we came forward, um, we presented the soil us uh, or um, sediment remediation plan to the commission, yep. and that was to go out to Oak Street and to Howard Street. And that was going to um, send some laborers in with buckets and and remove the sediment from the streams and put into the buckets. While at while at Oak Street, that was uh, um, somewhat effective. At Howard Street, that wasn't effective at all because what happened was the sediment got resuspended in the um, in the water and it got murky and stuff like that. Yeah. So as a result, um, in discussing discussing that with Chuck and Jamie, who was on site, the NRA mobilized the back truck, large back truck, yeah. into the area, and <coughs> it's coming up. Let me just delay for a second. Street and Oak Street. This is the dewatering where we were dewatering from the construction. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, and there's a small brook down here at 62 Oak Street, right past yeah. Oak Ridge. And there's another small brook over on Howard Street. Okay. And they're about um, maybe three feet, four feet wide. Yeah. And they're taking um, surface runoff from the storm and storm drainage systems. So um, the sediment yeah. removal plan wasn't going as, as well, over at Howard Street, due to the resuspension, so the NRA mobilized the vacuum truck. We went in um, with some of the Conservation Commission members, and we we um, hooked up a hose onto the vacuum truck, and we went down that brook about 75 to 100 feet, and we removed. Um, this is the guy with the hose right here. We hooked up a hose to the vacuum truck, went down along the brook, all the way as far as the next culvert. And removed approximately two to three inches of sand and any silt that was in that area. Um, this entire area 
the area right up until the pipe was clean. We also, on West Street and Howard Street, we put a um, TV truck inside the, inside the lines and videotaped the lines. Um, this crew, I didn't get, the, I didn't get the, a copy or a picture of any of the, the things. They've been busy with emergency preparedness, um, plowing and doing other activities. And, but on Howard Street, the, the town is gonna have a problem and I'll go into that later. And, because the brook itself, the, um, the brook itself is at a higher elevation than your drain lines. So the sediment is backing up on Howard Street. Now, there's some sediment in that line from the brook back approximately 60 to 80 feet. I mean, the MDRA will, we're offering to clean that line, but we're still, I think the DPW needs to get down to the brook and dig out that brook and, and lower it um, approximately by a foot if that's gonna actually flow. Otherwise, you're gonna have the same problem again. So is an area of backwater that's occurring? Is that what yeah, you're saying? It's, yeah, it's, it's surcharging on Howard Street. Okay. We went in with the back truck. Um, we dewatered that into the back truck, and we discovered that there's, um, it, there's sand and silt there. Mm -hmm. So s some of it may be ours. We're willing to clean mm -hmm. it, but mm -hmm. it's, it's not going to alleviate the problem. Once you're going to have it occurring again mm -hmm. unless you do something with the brook. Sure. On the next slide, I just, I made the mistake of showing snow. Uh, <laughs> but um, this is the brook at Oak Street, and um, I just, this is just showing you the level of support that the MDRA is trying to get to the um, commission that we're trying to um, rectify this issue in, 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 in response to the order that we received. So now, did you, you had effluent coming out of the Vactor truck? No, no. Um, Take it off site? Yes. Oh, yeah. We brought it back to Summerville. Oh, okay. That's the facility there. All right. So um, it's a contained truck. Then. Right. Okay. We sucked it all up into there. One of the problems with the vacuum truck is that under freezing conditions, it doesn't work so well. Um, <coughs> when we were um, working here, it, it actually froze. It was a small area by the, the vernal pool that we didn't get down to the um, complete bottom on. Which we're again, we're willing to come back and do that at some <coughs> some future uh, some future date. It's but not really so. a vernal pool. It's a pool. It's a pool. <coughs> I'm sorry, I use the homeowners. Um, <laughs> I use the homeowners as just a pool. Yeah, it's a, the gentleman actually you know. came into our uh, commission for a project. So 64 Oak Street was Bob Caboni. Okay, I don't know if you guys remember. <coughs> Vaguely. Yeah. I think Bill Manuel did the delineation. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, gotcha. So at this, at this at time, Oak we're willing to um, we're willing to do you know some more. Um, I'm sorry. Then on Oak Street, on if you go back to the map on the first slide, it's just at on Oak Street here. This whole line, this drain line, <coughs> was in it's in bad shape. It's um it's, it's falling down, okay. and stuff like that. So they uncovered a lot of bricks in this line. But um, I understand FSMT on the next project is going to be replacing a lot of those drain lines on mm -hmm. Oak Street anyway. So okay. I wouldn't recommend running out there to do any work on those drain lines. Um, there was some catch basins right at the corner here, I'm told, that had some sediment in them. Um, those could be sucked up with the vacuum truck as well. Going down West Street towards Howard, was were those... Um put the TV down in there. Yes, we, we went all the way up to the corner here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I, I didn't stay with the truck all the time, but I, I was told that they, they ran up pretty much the whole way. But if, if there's any areas on the TV camera that show anything, while the back truck is here on Howard Street, we could, we could also do that area as well. I bet George would like those tapes. <laughs> <laughs> George is the, uh, the yeah, town the engineer. <laughs> same for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you know when you can get that TV um, stuff to us? Yes, um, as soon as the crews get back to normal. Um, a lot of those crews, they work. Um, they send them out at um, night plowing and stuff sure. like that. Yeah. It'll probably be, um, gotcha. I'm going to guess, next week sometime. Yeah, I talked to I oh. talked to the manager of the wastewater ops group this morning. He said probably next week. He says if it's a real dire emergency, you can... Yeah. 
pull somebody in, but everybody's out on snow removal. Right, right, which is might, a safety Might be out again next Monday yeah. night. Yeah. <laughs> and Thursday. And then he also yeah. said for the VAC truck that um, right now, obviously, the priority is snow removal. Sure, stuff, sure. But that coming back, he said they had the problems last week with it freezing, so he said really yeah. mm -hmm. 30 degrees or, or warmer is, is the preferred when, because mm -hmm. he says they get out there and just encounter problems. Mm -hmm. So um, the weather is what's working against us. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I guess the water line is on the front of the truck, and when the truck drives up the highway, it just freezes oh, on them. Boy, so yeah. they arrive, they get to Reading a couple times, and um, their hoses or their lines were frozen. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah. They're super cold. So I would, like Corey mentioned, it would be it's a small window when it just goes above 30 is what 32 is what they need. Okay. Um, at this point, what's the road schedule, the construction schedule? The, the, the construction schedule. When are you going to be out of that area? They still have to put in a manhole here. Yeah. At um, blow off manhole at West Street. Yeah. And then once that manhole is put in, they are out of that intersection. They still have to work on West Street down here by the highway from um, the Woburn line yep. up to, um, it's right South on the other Street. side of the highway, the condo complex, Reading yep. Commons. Yep. Now that's all Woburn's problem. We don't have to worry about that. Actually, <laughs> it, actually yeah. it is. It, is. <laughs> it all it flows is. down there. Um, <laughs> when you say we're out of this area, what, what um, are we talking about uh, just backfilling and putting in a cap of pavement on top of that, or are you just going to or it's going to be still a cabin. Oh, no, no. Um, be, it would be put the manhole in, backfill around it, pave it, um, restore the curb line, and... Um, so you would be completely pretty much completely done. Completely yeah. out of that. Okay. So so can you... I know with the, with the snow, it's been a delay and stuff. As, as far as um, next week, when they, when they resume, resume working, yeah. the plan is to go right there with a crew and yeah. put that manhole in. I think they have, since it's rather deep they have three or four more days work there okay so and by the end of next week yes they should be complete unless we get a big storm. Unless, unless you get a big storm i understand and what and what i just wanted to understand that so what's the plan for dewatering going forward for the installation of that manhole you said it's gonna be about four days so um how how is the dewatering being handled from from here forward um right now in the in um a sit is a sedimentation basin mm -hmm. um the corner there at West Street, and they'll pump into that sedimentation basin. Inside in the sedimentation basin, there's stone. There's also a silt bag, because mm -hmm. we mentioned we encountered a very fine silt in that area. Right. So right. Um, then, as it goes down the curb line, it goes through further um, check dams and flock logs before it gets to the catch basins. And there's barely six of them, and then when it gets to the catch basin, there's a silt sack inside in the catch basin. So now. So this process has has been upgraded from what from what I've seen before that caused the sedimentation. Yeah. Okay. Good. Because of the flock logs. Yeah, and then in the stream as well, there's also flock logs okay. inside in the stream, and um, there's a jute mesh that runs along the bottom of the stream um, to try to capture any um, okay. sediment as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, so at this point, um, the plan for the stream at 62 Oak Street is. It sounds like it's it's at next thirty degree day. Try and get that truck there to um, to suck out some more of the sediment. Um, how far down the stream are you planning on going? What where's it's it's right past the bridge to the um, quote pool pool area. Um, so to the lowest pool. Lowest pool area, and pool they've area. already gone um, yeah. all the way down to that point. So it just, it's a matter of um, the size of that table, basically, right now, yeah, just yeah. getting that area. Chuck, is that your understanding of the extent of the silt? Have you, um... Um, I, because you have, we have it on this map all the way to Sturgis. Right, and it was, it was questionable. You know, to, there's a difference between getting it right away when it's happened and then in a few weeks from now or in the spring. I think it's going to flush through. I think these guys have done a lot and they got, yeah, it, they got it up and they've done a bunch. I, you know, my suggestion would be let's wait until the project's over, wait until the spring, check it out and see if we want any more work done. Because with this vac truck, 
it's it's not a precise operation. Mm -hmm. we're, we're losing a lot of organic matter during right. that, and I think that it's really a um, scour. If we could just have you know just kind of modify the enforcement order to have a return uh, evaluation, maybe. It, you know, to see where we want to be. I mean, I think the pools are going to be filled with sediment no matter what. Um, but what can we do about them? Because I understand that they were trying to rake them out and the, and the, um, the back tube was freezing. And, you know, that's the kind of stuff we don't want to happen. You know, this improvising right. on site. So it might be better at this point just to see what happens to leave some check dams in place. And those pools are basically a check dam also, but maybe something else. Um, and I think the flock logs and whatnot, but we can go over that next week with the guys on site and see what's going on. I don't, I don't know how long you guys are gonna be around town, you know, in, into the spring. Are you gonna be around in the spring on this project? Or is someone to call and say, hey, oh, no, you, want? Yeah, no, we still have to close out, even though um, I can't speak for Mark. Mark's trying to get out of here in the next month, a month and a half, but I mean, then we have to close the project out. So you could still talk to Kevin or myself and, and, and say we'd like to meet on site at any time. Yeah, so I, I would say that any of the check dams, so we'd want to have an evaluation, and if it's all fine, then we'd want the check dams, the flock logs, and the whole stream area to be put back into shape. So someone's going to have to do that. Mm -hmm. And that could be the last day. Or, the, you know, we could say some, you know, some more vacuuming could be needed. I think as you extend it out, it's harder to, it's harder to work. I mean, this wasn't, like I said, this this was a lot of suction. Yeah. I've seen it dial down a lot more than that before, but I mean, this was a lot of suction that they were yeah. using on this. I think you're gonna find the beautiful pools. truck that they had. Well, it was brand new, huh? Just about. I think you're gonna find the pools are gonna be full of sediment anyway. The water yeah. slows down in there. Sediment settles out in those pools all the time, unrelated to this job. I don't think that'll flush through. So maybe at this point we're just monitoring it, and we have a date to reconvene and uh, see what's happening. Well, what if, um, what if before the spring those pipes get cleaned? The pipes on on Oak Street. Well, in Howard. Pipes on Howard. <clears throat> um, they've cleaned most of it, except for maybe 30 feet. I don't know if you cleaned that last bit yet, no. but there's a problem with the stream bed. Right. So, Resuspending. And I know that the engineering department okay. has some so plans to do some work in the area. Yeah. I don't know if they're dropping the stream bed by a, by a foot, but I mean that's that's just basically is what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. with those vac trucks, you can't submerge the tube into the water. You have to suck everything out and kind of get down closer to the sediment. So I don't know if you guys can do anything. With the sediment that's there. What we would have to do is um, we would plug the, the pipe on the outside yeah. and then we would pull everything down and then suck everything into the vector truck and just haul it away. Yeah. So they were supposed to do that like the following day but they, they didn't get to that. They were going to lock up one of the, one of the pipes and oh, they, hammer the area. Yeah, on Howard Street the, um, they there's, did a, there's another brook that runs this way. Yeah. So they plugged up the pipe over here to stop the water from getting in here. Yep. That's what they did, so then they could TV the line. Oh, so they only TV it, they didn't... Right, they, they only TV it. Yeah. Okay. Well... I, I, just, I just bring that up because it's, it's kind of this uh, hidden, unseen source of additional sediment. No, there's a lot of sediment there. Because yeah. when they removed the check dam that was just in front of the culvert, the inverted to the culvert, sediment just, out. just started coming right out. Yeah. So it should that area should be clean, I would suggest. It seems that to me that that's happens. more of an urgent matter than, than cleaning out the streams right now. Matt, do you think Yeah, this is the first warm day that we have, um, like the back truck, as soon as it's above thirty two, we can get them out there and we'll we'll um, we are willing to do that. Willing what I what the feedback I got from our operations people if there's a lot of sediment in there that is not our, there's a lot of sand and stuff as well. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. But the authority is willing to step gotcha. up and do this. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I, right. It's I, not the fines it's not, necessarily. It's, it's, it's all, right, right, right. right. Yeah, please understand that these guys have probably cleaned out a lot of the stuff that wasn't theirs. Right, so right. If right. there's any kind of horse yeah. trading going on, yeah. you know, well, no, maybe just it's completely even at this point. Right, right, right. Well, so that's, that's a more it, it realistic sounds to me like the issue at Howard Street is bigger than than this issue. So I mean, then uh, Oak Street. No, no, no. I mean, 
the, the issue at Howard Street is beyond this project. It yeah. began way before this project. So, you know, asking him to do more over there is, like you said, it's we may so be we, getting we into will, it. So we will clean it, and if it's plugged, they'll videotape it right away to show it clean, and then, yeah. and then it's, yeah. it's on yeah. its own. Then it's, right. that's it. Right. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. It's understandable. Gotcha. Okay. Any other questions? No? All right, well, keep in touch. Well, let's have it. <laughs> I know. I know. So we'll put Hold it, on. We'll, we'll put it on We're going to come back and clean. We're going to keep the check dams and stuff. We'll come back and clean yep. at Howard Street. We'll keep the check dams and stuff in yep. at Dallas Oak Street, and we'll monitor that. Is that what I'm for? We'll, we'll come back in the springtime. <coughs> to, uh... um, I, don't, I would. My thought is that you would only keep the one check dam at the at the outfall at, at Oak Street. Okay. And with a flock log Howard in it, Street was cleaned out. Okay. Well, where else would you put it? Do you do you want one at all down down there at Oak Street? A a what a check dam? Yeah. Well, check there is one. In the flock log. They're already there at Howard at, at Oak at Street. Oak. At Oak. Isn't there? There's some yeah, silt so fence. The, there's the check there's dam four feet from the yeah. outfall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of making a mini pool right at the outfall. Right. Yeah. So just leave that there for now. I think just leave it. I would say that that might be another spot to clean out um, when you come back with your vector truck to do the Howard Street area just in front. Because I have a picture of it. I can't, so just can't, can't find it right now. It's pretty. It drops right I think you sent me the picture. I, right, right in yeah, front. Yeah, right in front of the outfall at 62. Okay. Oak okay. Street. I thought that did get vacked out a little bit. It did. They went down, they about, they went down about six inches. But, oh really? Um, and that's that was my email was the before and after pictures. And then I think what happened was maybe it kind it was of looked a little same. bit of um, um, the suspension. It went up and then it, it, it down. fell down. Yeah. But if you look at the leaves in that photo, um, those photos, it's it's really just a dusting on the leaves in there. But we can we can go at it again. I mean, it's not a big deal. Yeah, yeah. And then I don't want to cause more problems, but they've done it once. Yeah. I mean, I think... Um, the minute you get in there, it's going to resuspend that, that sediment. So I'm just looking for a date when they come back, what the work is that they're going to do between now and that date, and um, how they want, how you want the area set up during yeah. this, you know, this time yep. period where they're not here. Well, I think um, even if weather, I mean, weather will probably, if there's another storm, it might take another day or two out of your <coughs> schedule. Right, so um, the next meeting is the 11th, which should be, that's not next week, no, that's it's the week not, after. They're, so They're not coming to that meeting. They, they, they need to come back in the spring. Yeah, it's when not it's warm. We're not getting warm temperatures between now I, and I so think that they no, should not. keep the, whatever they have in there, this, you know, this flock locks and whatnot in place until they're finished their project. When they're finished their project, because that's actually working and it's not, Oops. so we're not getting this sediment anymore. Six. Plus, they got smarter at at the very end, beginning, you know, so they're not actually sucking up much sediment anymore. Yeah, there has so, to be a, a demob. So, do you want the flock log and the and the check dams in this? Drainage area on on around 62 Oak Street. Yeah, I think it has to stay there until all the sediment, until all the water discharge upstream, is done. Right. So that's what I'm talking so, about. At that point, when they are done, yeah, take them out and let it go until the first meeting in April, and they'll come back and we'll do an evaluation a couple days before the meeting. I'm, I'm tempted to leave to say my thought is to say leave it in until. Um, we can go back in after it's all been done. That the stuff had set up at Oak Street, the flock logs and um, the, set, the siltation control stayed. We want it to flush through. There's no more. They've already cleaned it. I'm just saying that they've already cleaned it out between Oak Street and the first pond. That's that's my understanding. And there's stuff left there. I know it's not perfect, but okay. we did do it, and we're going to cause more damage. So if we can just have it flush through naturally. And it, and it goes on its way, whatever this is, 
that might be a better alternative than to have them come through. And I can show you pictures of, I have a video of this guy sucking out the stream just to scare you into accepting my proposal. We'll go so ahead and play I, it. I, I don't know if it'll go on. Because I don't think people were here for. I take your word for it, Chuck. Yeah. You don't want to be scared. I don't want to be scared. Yeah, I know good Brian. Brian often is. I might go out and buy one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so Got a used back truck for sale. <laughs> <laughs> we will leave the check dams and block logs in place right now at the first set at Oak Street at the stream. We'll come back and we'll clean the drain at Howard Street. And then we'll coordinate with, with Chuck for follow up in the spring. Is that I think it sounds correct acceptable. summary? Yeah. <coughs> Chuck, did you go to did you go to a class for this? Just to clarify, are we after we're done our dewatering operation? With are we removing that check dam at Oak Street, or is that remaining in place? Thank you. Are you helping? Me? So I, yeah, I think it should be like you know. Yeah. This is not it. Well, that's <laughs> after <laughs> beach, then you hit airplane. Oh, am I doing the right thing? Sorry. <coughs> Really going here. Okay. Uh, I, I, I was able to do that before. 20, 20 to that out. No, I think we're off that. Yeah, it's oh, HDMI. Yeah, it's the HDMI one. And then you just hit airplay. Movies. Let's do movies. I is going, yeah. I don't think I've it's, it's over here. You gotta hit that. Thank you, and then you go to airplane. You had it before. Yeah, yeah I did have it. Because whatever you did before. Did not, yeah. <laughs> but right. I don't know. That's how you have to do it. You're very smart, boys. This is a not so smart. <laughs> this is like half smart. Half smart. It's like an edge of smart. Yeah. Now, in my opinion, if, there's, if there isn't a, a significant slug of sediment that's coming down the pipe um, towards Oak Street, then, and it's just a, I mean, a small amount of sediment will turn that water very, very cloudy. That stuff was so fine. The tiniest disruption will make it all. It's not gonna get big, murky mess. Good, yeah. So are you just we we, we just keep going on Oak Street? I'm not looking anymore. <laughs> so at this point, during the dewatering, the, the, with the sedimentation removal basin, yeah, yeah, and the check dam and the flock logs that we've set up. It, everything that is discharging to that catch basin is clear and has been ever since it's been set up. Yeah. Um, there has never been any kind of cloudy water since that's discharging to the stream. So what we have set up is working. Um, and that's what we'll have set up for the remainder of the construction, putting in that manhole. And then once that manhole is in and the dewatering is done, we will take that down, uh, demolish the sanitation removal that's basin. Okay. And are we correct in saying that we're removing that check dam in the Oak Street stream? And I I'm sorry I'm confused about this, but the the drain line from the dewatering to the outfall, except for a couple of pieces of brick from the degraded pipe, degraded pipe, that's pretty much cleaned out. Yeah, there was never any. There was any never any buildup of sediment build up in any there. Sediment anyway. on Oak Street. Okay, all right. Um, I wasn't yeah. sure about that. Back to the original question: Take out the check dam. If there's no upstream sediment, it comes out. There's no reason okay, to leave so after, yeah. our, after our dewatering operation, we will remove the check dam. Yeah. Okay. All right. This is all, of course, you know, they've always been doing this, but they're going to give us a call. We'll go out there. We'll have someone out there to see this. And the cat is destroyed right there. So when you're removing, yeah, when it's all done, just right give me a call and come down so and check it out. Okay. That's okay. all. Yeah. Okay. So. Are you scared? <laughs> <laughs> no, it really did look pretty scoured. <laughs> You know, it really does. Are you scared, Brian? He's, he's excited. <laughs> okay. He wants to know how to get that home. All right, so in terms of a spring meeting, are we talking what? March? What's the first meeting in April? I, that's what I would look at. April 11th. Is it April 11th? Um, April 11th. I just want to clarify one thing on, on Oak Street. Are, are they keeping the dams in after they, they, they move on? No, the dams will be the very last things to. Uh, so they're going to take them out soon. They're not going to wait till the spring and leave them in. No, if there's no, no more it's April eight. Downstream, they should no be taken out. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for coming in. So April 11th, you're going to come back. April 8th. And prior to that, we'll just have a site walk again and to see what's needed, if anything. All right? So the check dam should be out so we can benefit from any, any flush throughs. Is that the Wednesday meeting? Someone April said April 11th. April 8th. April 8th. I had it okay. wrong. It was February 11th. March 11th, April 8th. All right, thank you. Okay. okay. Thank thank you. You. Thanks, Thanks for again. coming in. One more thing for the enforcement yes. order that was supposed to have the work done by January 30th, then. So, have we, we can actually met what we needed to do for that? Um, we could extend that. Do you think you. Uh, They may have met what we've asked them to do. Well, the lines are clear. Um, bulk of the sediment was taken out of Har Howard Street and then some. <laughs> um, um, and some was taken out of the Elf Fall at 62. Well, we could modify it just to put in this, these last couple of items. Just, yeah, we could modify it to extend the date out just to make sure, you know, the final follow up is still covered under. Okay. You know, some we, we, vehicle. We prefer that we, it would end. It would end. Obviously. I'm sure. Um, and we feel like we're going above and beyond in doing this drainage cleaning and stuff. This, we are an environmental agency, and this enforcement order is creating a, a real headache for us. And we would like for the enforcement order to end rather than to be extended. Um, I, I understand you have to make whatever decision you want. Um, but we feel that we did do the cleaning that we needed to do to meet okay. this. And we are, the water going forward with the new sedimentation system set up is not producing any more sedimentation into the stream. So we, we feel that we met <coughs> what we needed to do and we're still willing to come back and do more for, for the community. Chuck, do you feel that they're in the plans? <coughs> yeah, I feel that they've done what we've asked, but we didn't have a chance to verify the results of what they've done. So if we take away the enforcement order, we can't give them another one from not doing something that they haven't even got to that date yet. So to modify it and to keep them under this is our only protection. Okay. But you guys can do what you want. I mean, we're, I, I, we, I think that, that I've heard that we have away. a final sign-off or something we're like not that. Somebody who's just <coughs> flying through town. From the from engineering, but that's engineering. That's not us. Right. Um, Typically, a lot of town town <coughs> what happened was we get an enforcement order, and then we would get relief. That doesn't mean we can't get more if if it, if it comes up. But that's um, different towns do it different ways. That's all. Yeah. I guess that's yeah. what. Um, you know, it it is clear that you've done a you know, put out a great effort to address this and to respond. Um, but I would like to keep something open until it's finally, until we can get that verification that it's all over and done with. What? Well, couldn't you close this one and then in like April or whenever, if they don't do it, then you could do it? Like issue a new one? Yeah, why, why, why is that not an option? Because if she's saying that it's a problem for them right now, but if they don't come back and do it, then we can, like, is there a way to stipulate that at all? I don't know. Well, the thing is, I mean, for me, we have, and I have no reason to disbelieve, you know, the word of the, what the lines are like, but we don't have the TV videos. Um, we don't know when the work is really going to stop in this area. You know, I mean, with the storms, there's been some delays. I don't think it's, it would be a problem. I don't think it's really, you know. We don't know when the work is going to happen. You're right, because of the weather. But we really have maybe three or four days worth of work left. So it's, it's three or four days worth of work to do. It's just a matter of when does it get done out of the weather. Obviously, we want Caliaco to get it done and get out. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think we all agree on that. The yeah. sooner the better. But weather is, is what's going to determine yeah. that. Um, we, we, 
you, you know, obviously it's, it's the commission's discretion to decide what to do. We are not disappearing though. And again, if we don't have an order of conditions here. It's we're falling under the towns. Um, so we will, if you close it and decide that we don't meet whatever you want us to do, I mean, you can issue another enforcement order. But right. We are right. around. It, but this enforcement order has really created many headaches. So, so what I would mean, I do? The, the, well, <laughs> we would. The work is. The work we wish is we didn't have to do it in the first an existing place. order of conditions. If they're not in compliance with the order of conditions, this work isn't covered on the existing order of conditions. This this work was. The construction was, work is. The construction work is. Right. So anything that happens under that order of conditions. No, this was actually added to that order of conditions when George came in and asked us to give him a plan change. So it was. It was, I don't know if there was a presentation by George or whatnot, but we agreed to this work. But there was a dewatering well, aspect now. in this that now. wasn't followed. You know, it doesn't matter. We don't have to, like, here's the thing. You know, they've paid attention. I'm sorry, but they've paid attention when, when MWRA found out they were in an enforcement order. All right? Yeah. So we take that away. I don't know who's in charge. I haven't worked with any of these guys enough to know what's going to happen. But to me, you know, I don't know if why it's a problem but I know why it's good for us and that means because we have some control over the situation so right. we could modify it um, and put the dates in there we could say all this work that they've done is acceptable these are the final things that we need done and you know we're reevaluated on the April 8th um, but I wouldn't go any further than that okay it's we will be coming back at the MWRA, not, not necessarily with Kelly Ackle, but we will be coming back, our engineering group, because we are trying to improve the water system throughout mm -hmm. the community, and there is a bigger project that is coming through. So okay. the engineering people will be coming back, and so we, we are not disappearing from the town, okay. unfortunately. No, I don't, I don't think you are. Back. No. Um, so we will be around, and we obviously don't want to set a bad precedent or a bad right. tone with right. you when we're going to have to work with you going forward on these other projects that are coming forward. Well, I think everyone agrees. Once MWA kind of took over this project with Mary White, it was it was great. It was wonderful. All the resources that you brought in to help us out and the attention that you paid to it was was great. And it's just. If it wasn't for the weather, we would be done. But we have a weather problem now, and that's where we're at. But and we are, like I say, we are an environmental agency, so an enforcement order is a big black eye to us. Right. And it does not sit well within the agency. Right. So that is, you know, regardless of whether what it you has issue it or not, it's, it's the perception in yeah. house. It does yeah. not go over. Well, I'm I'm in favor of extending uh, the deadline for the for the enforcement order. Um, I just think, uh, as a matter of protocol, you know, we should finish the we should close out the enforcement order when the work is done. Um, it just seems to make sense. So, um, could move it out till just as a April eighth. It could be April eighth. It's all set on April eighth. Yeah. We need a uh, kind of like a monitoring report prior to that, and a site visit week before, and we should be set. I don't expect there to be any problems with some of the spring rain that goes down through that area. No. Okay. All right. Any objections? Comments? No. Nope. I object. <laughs> we, I understand. We gonna, we, we, I well, I feel that the work that we've done. We've, we've cleaned up whatever we've done. The remaining work left going forward, we've ensured that the, the sedimentation system is working and we don't anticipate any more sediment going in. And I strongly feel that we've removed what we, we contributed and more. So again, that's, that's my opinion. I appreciate your input. Um, as a matter of, as a matter of um, you know, Finishing with something when it's all done and everybody can see it and comment on it and um, and it really is done, which it isn't today, you know, right here and now, because you're still doing construction work at that corner, um, and yeah, water is still being generated. It's being managed, but it's not.
completely, it's not, you're not out of that area yet. Um, and freezing, thawing, uh, you know, I, <laughs> act of God, you know, God help us, you know, I don't want to see any of that happen. And I've appreciated all that the MWRA has done. And, and I wish it wasn't, um, you know, uh, uh, a scourge within, you know, a black mark within the operating of it. Um, but that's the only vehicle we had to get some, to get some action going on it in the, in the first place. Um, when the first violations were beginning to happen. Um, so that being what it is, we are where we are. I think we should, and it sounds like uh, other commissioners agree with me, not hearing any objections, that let we could close it out when we think it can be reasonably closed out, foreseeably. Allison. So I just had a question about this. So is it the construction part of it? like still ongoing construction that's the issue of keeping it because couldn't we re like if once the construction is done couldn't we revisit it prior to april 8th or is it the whole thing where we need to make sure that the streams flushed it sort of thing it's that's the part, whole potential one. for sediment to be discharged to the wetlands you know if if the construction is done and dewatering is finished um and you know and we see in the tv lines that you know, it had it. We say they say it's clear. That's great. Let's see it and verify that. And we get we get that assurance and that that understanding that we're done with this issue. Yeah. And we get all the evidence. So if that happens prior to April eighth, if it happens prior to April eighth, okay, that's, then, that was my thing. I was like, I, I was surprised. We, we, we were, were just trying to pick April, a this could latest. Be like in a month, sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. We were just right. picking a far yeah. down the hill date. Um, so it can be prior far down yes. the road, and if it does finish yeah. earlier, sure, let's close it out earlier. I understand. Absolutely. My, uh, okay. my point was just that I thought the enforcement order was for the sediment that was already in place, not you're looking at is for the four more days of work that we're going to do that there's potential to add more. Now that's where I agree with you that then issue us a new enforcement order if we did something at that point. The enforcement order, my understanding, was that was issued. We went and didn't take care of that. Unless, I mean, unless there's just, something that you think still needs to be cleaned up at this point. Right. Well, well, I think that's that's part of it, too. I mean, there might be... So when we went to Howard Street, it was me and Jamie Mon who were there, and we could see that it was good. You did the best you could do. Um, this one on Oak Street, I didn't see that. I know that I think you were there. I was there, but not when the vac truck was there. And it sounded like the things got frozen, and you get as far as you wanted to, and you had to end up raking. So it, it didn't have that finality that the other place. No, I, I, and I agree with that. Uh, but they did have the freezing problem. But I did talk to the operations staff mm -hmm. and of the debris that they did remove when they emptied the vac truck. And they said the majority of it, there was some sediment in there, but the majority of it was like a sand and more of a road runoff stuff. So they, they did clean up. Above and beyond the right. Okay. Life. And did could they reach out any further than they did, or they or because of the freezing they could only get so far? Well, it's because of the freezing. Because of the freezing <coughs> that yeah. they, they so you really you could have gone to those the, two they, pools. They yeah. to the the pools is what they intended <coughs> to do, but that pool, from what we looked at, looked like a lot of road runoff. But and it also doesn't matter whether you have this existing enforcement order or we write a new one saying. Right, but if I go back and say this one's to... closed out, that goes a lot further than saying they're going to extend it from that the potential there's other that may occur. Well, when you say it causes problems for you, I'm fine with sending it to you. What kind of problems are you having because you have this in I'm having Jerry got disciplined for this problem, and the executive office, the executive director at the authority is very upset over this whole thing because. The, and then the chief operating officer is a former DEP guy, and he sees it as a personal affront to some of his colleagues that he used to work with. So it, it just doesn't sit right. Gotcha. There's been a lot of grief, and Jerry's taken a beat in over it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well, let's try and get it closed out sooner than April 8th. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if... if um, you know, if word can get back that, you know, we're very satisfied with the effort that's happened so far, 
um, and we don't expect that it'll go to April 8th, um, but we just don't have those last bits and pieces in place to have the, all the knowledge here tonight at this meeting to say it's over and done with. Can, I'm just going to do something. Can, can we explore this for a second? What can you offer us to, to that's going to make us feel like you will finish up? Because we don't, we have the order of conditions, and I guess you couldn't close out. But when a municipality, the order, yeah, the order of conditions is it's, it's, not, it's, it's not, not like that a, name. It's not like right, a, exactly. right, yeah. right. It's not. I was like going to say it's under Ju or the engineering department. It's not like um, it's one and done. You only get a chance to issue one um, cease and desist order. It's like a, a a police ticket. You can issue it tomorrow. You could come down and say we're not. You could call. Kevin or myself next week and say I'm not happy with the dewatering. Come down and right. give us another one. Right. It's just um, it's not just um, you know we, we are to follow the order conditions as it is. Not just have a a blanket um, suspension order on top of the order conditions. You know you can just keep at, um, piling them on top of each other. I mean yeah, it's not our intent to start piling on enforcement orders. Um, so, um, you, you looking at the, the order right now, Chuck? I was looking at, you know, to see if they've completed. I did notice that it's only asking that it gets cleaned out, and it and it says how I expected it to happen in the first place. But also looking at their um, sedimentation removal plan, there wasn't it wasn't a spot where there was a follow up to it. You know, it just says. Um, I was just looking at it. Um, this is probably right hand. Work to be completed by January 30th. I mean, that's weather it. permitting. But what about the performance standards? The performance standards of the order of the enforcement order. Enforcement order. Um, appear before the commission. Come up with a plan. Uh, no mechanized vehicles in the stream. Removal of fill and debris from the intermittent stream. Um, so all it talks about the stream. Pre-activity meeting with the conservation agent. That's it. It's just it's so the only thing we have is remove the sediment from the stream. So have they uh, met those standards in the enforcement order? Except for verifying that we're satisfied with Oak Street. I think that I think that Howard Street is off the list. I think that's fine, okay. except for that, you know, they've agreed to clean that out. I don't think that needs to be an enforcement order. Um, but this one here on Oak Street, it could be it could be those two pools which are fairly close to uh, 62 uh, Oak Street. But we'd, we'd walked further out into uh, the back area there, and it could be further. And, you know, I'm kind of curious what happens to that sediment. And then we were kind of going back and forth whether <coughs> what I was looking at, which was that brown-green matter, the sediment or not the sediment, and had it been there before. And that kind of continues way down in the back, all the way to this stone wall that has to be 600 feet away. And so we brought out the homeowner of 62 Oak Street and asked him if he ever saw this stuff accumulate in his ponds before, and he said, no, that's new. Hmm. So it doesn't mean it's from this, it doesn't, but it could be a reaction with the flock logs, the hmm. organics, and the clays. So I'm not, I'm not sure. And then that stuff is in the stream. So how far does it go? What does it look like in the spring? I think that's kind of important, you know, at, at this point. Um, but I mean, as far as this, you know, this, or, this enforcement order is concerned, I mean. Clean the sediment in the streams. That's it. I mean. So we haven't, so has that happened? I can tell you it has happened at Oak Street. Has it, I mean, uh, Howard Street, but has it happened at Oak Street? Hard to tell. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, no one's tell. verified. We haven't, we haven't been out there. We don't know the extent of it. The problems happened when they were out there. It was just a different day um, with different weather. Well, is anybody is anybody in the commission feel like they, they, they would entertain uh, closing this enforcement order? 
Or is that, is that, I, off, the, is that off the table? I'm not You're comfortable. You to see the video. Uh, okay. I feel like it should be a, couple, like, a little bit longer. So do we have, do we have, uh, is there something of the videos sufficient to see if we've cleaned the sediment? Right. Like, I, like I said, they videotaped it, then they got called away on an emergency. But um, I was just saying that that's something, you know, we offered to TV that just to show you, you know what I'm saying? Like now we're offering to, to do Howard Street. Now, now is Howard Street, you're going to hold us to Howard Street. And then if we offer to do something mm -hmm. else, you know, that's stuff you're holding us to. Yeah, I don't think Howard Street cleaning the storm drain was part of it. It was kind of what happened since we're out there and they've discovered a problem. So I don't think Howard Street has anything to do with this. I mean, it's really just Oak Street. Uh, but I mean, is the video, would the video be evidence enough for us to determine whether or not Oak Street is, is clear? I mean, yeah, Oak Street is clear, or is that not, has it not even been the done video, yet? The video is of the drain pipe. Yeah, the drain. So that's a separate issue. Yeah, I think okay. the drain which, gets which, cleaned which, every time it Jerry's rains. What getting at is we're going to take additional steps, and then are we going to be penalized for what these additional steps are? Who, by us? Yeah. Who are you saying you want to well, see? Well, by the, waiting to see the video. We need to see, you want to see the video. The video was an extra step that we offered. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, so I thought maybe that they had documentation that the stream yeah, we will was get done. the videos yeah. to you we will get them to chuck but when i talked to steve Cullen this morning he said it'll probably be next week unless it's an absolute dire emergency that he all right i thought the emergency. videos were just being curious I, as i understand it caliaco is going to be doing oak street and you know it seems to me that they're going to be replacing that drain right so it wouldn't matter whether yeah. it's all right yeah so the videos it's, are not it's, it's what's yeah. coming yeah. out not what's inside of it i mean right i, right. I mean what's inside of it is going to come out but there's been a few snowstorms and rainstorms and it seems to be operating clean and I, I can't remember the numbers you guys are pumping like 1500 gallons a minute or something like that or well at this point we're only pumping 30 gallons a minute now they're thousand. down to 30 yeah uh, so it's not bad that's not bad just well. enough to keep the water table depressed so that they can put in those culverts exactly. at the corner. We, we have, um, well, we have you a know, pump in a separate well that's that's pumping most of the groundwater 24 7 into the drainage basin yeah, which is coming yeah. up clear to begin with yeah know, because yeah. It's, it's, it's a crushed stone basin yeah. that it's just standard groundwater. Yeah. Right. It's and not being mixed with any kind of digging material or anything like that. So, um, and that's totally separate from where we're digging. Mm -hmm. yeah. And tapping that well in has drawn down that water table greatly so that way when we are digging, we're not deep water. Yeah. So yeah. that's another measure that was taken, to making sure that we're not pumping any more sediment with that stream. It's all just the different cleanup. material. <laughs> so if it's what wasn't there from previous, yeah, that's all that's going to be. In there. Yeah, yeah. Now, in terms of what's in um, that stream at 62 Oak Street, um, there's some light material. There's that darker material. Um, the lighter material um, seems to be, by my memory of seeing seems to be in the same color range of what was discharged originally. That's what I remember, um, a light, so light the, brown. So is the darker, you know, I don't know what the darker is or where it came from. Um, I'm not sure, and and, it, and it's prevalent throughout, well past the, the lower How pond. How dark is dark? What are we it's talking about? It's a green, it's like that. Dark. I don't want to speculate, but it, it could be. I don't know. It could be the organics, anything that's coming down that drain line, so hitting the clock <laughs> I can't and tell. Blocking up down for the passage. I think I think we would have to have a real official scientific analysis to figure right. out what that what that is. Um, I mean, that's just. I mean, this, the, I, the I don't know by I sight. Come out of that that dewatering outfall was this color. Right. There was very right, light. and there was some sediment very at the light. outfall. And the sediment, and the sediment like that, that was that was that. The the challenge is when they would suck out that. You know, they're not going to get every little bit of that sediment. Right. The instant the something touches that water, that sediment's resuspended because it's so light. So, well, if they even if they do vac it know. out, there might resettle another very very thin film of that sediment, just or maybe it gets washed out. I'm I'm not sure. I think I, don't know if they I think the bottom know. line is, and I kind of want to move on with the the <laughs> hearing, um, with the meeting and the night um, is that. We don't have conclusive final information that we're done at Oak Street, unless you have something to add. Uh, I just want oh. to comment, if I could, on the uh, on the silt that you're seeing. Right, that we saw street. we saw together. Because um, I, I looked at that and we right. played in it and it stirred up and, right. and moved on down. 
And as you could find pockets in you know, little places where you would find some of this light colored silt, which you know, we're, uh, I think we're pretty much in agreement is, uh, you know, came from uh, this operation. Just but it was mixed with, I mean, there was other silt there with it. And, and silt underneath it and silt on top of it. Right. Um, I mean, as a geologist uh, with some, you know, some background in, in stream dynamics, the silt that you're seeing is part of the natural bed load or, or suspended load of that stream. I mean, it's just part of its innate qu you know, quality now. You can see it, it, it can come from the bank, it can come from uh, from uh, you know, from road sediment, uh, you know, from sandy and the breakdown of sand from uh, uh, sanding operations. So it, it's part of its natural habitat, if you will, at this point. Um, whether it's natural in its origin or not, it's part of its, its uh, the way the stream now operates. So yes, there is some sediment and some silt further on down, and, and I won't uh, you know that that is part of uh, you know our operation. I won't deny that, but I think it's just going it's going to mix you know with uh, with whatever else goes on with that stream. And as, as Chuck mentioned, you know, come the first good sp um, uh, spring rain, high runoff. Right, it's going to be, you know, part of the equilibrium of that stream. It'll be moved on down with all the other silt that uh, the stream naturally carries. Yep. Well, Mary White. The other thing I was supposed to do, I forgot early, was apologize for her not being here tonight. Oh, she couldn't. That's right. But she is still who is giving Jerry direction on this, on the work out here, and there's a contact with with Chuck, and she still is involved with, with the project and will be through. The end, but she's okay. So we could, okay. you know, we've had a few minutes to think about this. We could close out the enforcement order, and I could write a letter, a letter, <laughs> with kind of laying out the steps that we want taken, and I could put dates in the on those steps. And if those aren't done, then I we could issue an enforcement order. Exactly. So we could do that. Exactly. <laughs> I, I don't I don't have with with the effort that's put out <coughs> at this point I don't have a serious objection because as long as the dates are as they were yeah. as they were think, speaking doable. I was thinking man we've gotten more out of the MWRA than we've had with uh, anybody even including people that have a 15 foot by 30 foot pile of debris in their backyard <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Let's not take it out on the one people that comply with us. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No. I don't know. Yeah, Any of you? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Right. All those in favor? Wait. Uh, Wait. Wait. I'll come Wait. letter. So make a, okay. make, yeah. make a motion. <laughs> okay. Motion to um, that they've met all the aspects of the enforcement order. And the next steps being? Verification of the clean out. And we'll send the them a letter with send some letter time with certain. Um, dates on it to comply with and then that's what we would be able to in enforce if they didn't do it okay yep. how are we going to work the dates out are you going to well, be I think in I have touch dates. with them they're going to they're going to finish up their project mm -hmm. i want to i want a site visit and i want the, the the stream cleaned yeah not just take out the the check dams and the block logs and then on April 8th, they're going to come back. And just prior to April 8th, so it's a Wednesday, so let's say the week before or the Monday before, we're just going to evaluate it with somebody, maybe Mary White or whoever. Somebody and we can work that out. We can work out. the details out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll just check it out so there'll be a report. Now, if everything is fine, that's what I'll report at the meeting. But if everything isn't fine, then... then right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. We can work the details out with each other. All right. So I, I move I move that we close out the enforcement order and uh, Chuck is going to issue a letter that has some performance standards and some and some uh, timelines. Deadlines. And and, uh, and are there any performance? I mean, I see that. Well, you, you just said clean the stream out, uh, remove the check dams. Those are those are steps that need to be taken. So 
I really think the spring will clean up the stream. I mean, that's, that's what I'm really saying. We're going to go back. We're yeah. going to look. Oh, look, no sediment. Yeah. Someone else's issue. And the, and the flock logs, you know, combining the pieces of organics makes sense. Yeah. Because it's that. Yeah. Pretty much that same color. Yeah. I, I don't want this to be a deal breaker comment, but I just, I'm concerned with that phrase, cleaning out the stream, because it seems to me that um, you've said one thing about how the extent of what an impact is in the stream, and then, you know, then there's your explanation of it. Um, so it's I'm fine to write that letter, and, but, you know, what's it going to mean? To, cl to close it out to everyone's satisfaction and so that it's fair to them that they understand right. and with what that we're said, asking for. What What is the, the stream clean out? The stream clean out is not perfect science and we're causing damage. So I guess in my opinion and why I'm trying to figure this out is because I'm not very comfortable with the method that we've, we've come up with and we've kicked this around and, and there's no other thing other than vacuuming it out. And, and it's invasive. Damage. Yeah. It's invasive. So if it never happens, and these, if it never happens, what have, what have we really lost? Never lost? happens. Yeah. That's okay. that's kind of what I was. Okay. I was thinking, but if just that final evaluation, you know, it's to me, it's important for someone to to write a report that says, you know, this is the condition of the stream now. And these things, like it may be part of the stream bed at this point, and from now, from now on, that yeah. that seems to be to be a finalized report that mm -hmm. we can just say, look, we've done our best, and we tried a, a different method. I mean, Howard Street is not like this stream. Mm -hmm. this no, stream it's not. It's they're design, different. You know, they're very different. And all that. So. Yeah. so there's a motion on the, on the floor. I accept the motion. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thanks for staying late. <laughs> okay. You'll send that letter to myself. Yeah. Who? Um, yes. Yeah, so make sure right. that we all get right. it because right. we didn't get right. it. Right. 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 <laughs> I, I figure okay. we're sending it here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your <laughs> persistence. Oh, all right. So. I can give you a different contact. I mean, I'll send it to Chris. You want to just email me everybody you want? Uh, right, he has Chris's car. Oh, yeah. Sorry. You want to just send Are there plans for a That was an hour. At the interchange. Is that what, is that what you're talking about? Well, I'm, no, I'm not talking about that. That's still future. We are doing a big loop for redundant line. Sure. That makes sense. So that's the card. I have his phone number. You have my phone number. Thank you. It's a good place to set up today. It's a good place. We're really high. Yeah, I mean, just tell me. And I know there's a line connecting. They just put this the line and connecting stone on the Is that right with the intersection? Right, right at the 128. 28, route 128. Yeah, right there. So what we're doing now is we're trying to do a big loop for a redundant system. Right. Where's the loop? Like we just said, I need to go to the other side. The engineering side. So the engineering side is working on it. But um, because at that know, point, the this little of piece in West Street that we're doing now yeah. is, we is part of the bigger loop. Sure. But the mass yeah. doctor contract is coming to the And they're going to do the paving and the paving. Ah, right, right. We're, we actually yeah. just, out of the big loop, do that over the piece. Sure. So really want mm -hmm. some sort of oh. thing. So and, uh, I don't know the street names. Yeah, that's something that works. Over there somewhere. Yeah, they are. Yeah, we're gonna find the same thing. Maybe it's overkill. Go find down there. Oh, good. I'm not sure everyone's gonna be worried about that. Great. Developing a whole exactly water. Yeah. That's great. It's a big project coming out. That's a big project. It's actually we're hoping that it's going to be three separate construction. Wow. Great. All right. Thank All right, you. Very good. Thanks a lot, Chuck. Because it is that big. That's a big mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. We're trying to make it so that it's more competitive. Sure. Sure. Rather than one $30 million project. Right. Three ten million dollars Sure. Because if you do the one $30 million, you're eliminating the one $10 million that you have to do. Absolutely. Yeah. So. That's great. Interesting. Thank well, thanks you. for your time tonight. Thank you. All right. OK. So. Um, Moving right along to whizzing right through to Pineville dumping. No. Mm -hmm. can, Pineville can, dumping. Can we can we resolve this tonight?
Yeah, I want to identify the neighbor. Can, can we Pineville just, Dumpy. So we can chase our tails with this one. So it's, we have it, been. There's yeah, been a couple yeah. steps that haven't happened yet. I wasn't able to get a call back from the chief of police to tell us what we do about dumping in town owned property. Okay. So I don't know the answer to that. I don't know what his criteria is where he would um, issue a fine. We can issue a fine. Okay. They can issue a fine. Um, so but it would be nice to know. Yeah, we have to prove who did it. Who did it? But again, but again, that's what I wanted to know. Wow. Who's this mysterious I mean, that's, that's what we want to know. I was going to explain the situation to him and get his input. I don't have that. I mean, can we issue a fine to a non-definitive person? I mean, seriously, how, how do we well, identify? Was this, the, was this the letter? Yeah. From the resident back yeah. explaining. Okay. That last you know. paragraph was there. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 wow. yeah, exactly, yeah. Well, he said stick I think it. Where did he Watch law and order. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think. As he was writing it. The, the, the only thing that sounded, you know, um, you know, the thing I can really understand is when um, mm. people buy a new house and things were done beforehand and they're sort of stuck with old problems. Um, it's that very said, to Road. Yeah, that yeah. said, um, they can't make the old problem worse right. <laughs> by allowing it to continue. Well, well, then, and I think exactly, that's the question here. You have three years to act upon a violation. Oh, that's under the Wetlands Protection Act. This is not. So, But you do have three years under the Wetlands Protection Act to act on a violation, um, even if someone buys their own house. We'll get a carbon-14 sample, so, see how old it so is. Or, previous owner? Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 exactly. That would make more sense, but you have so, to prove that. No, 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 to the, to the new owner. The new owner, okay. So if someone anything. buys the house, he inherits the Their issues. Problems. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's kind of what we right. said to the guy on Dustin, that you inherited a problem as well as the property. Right. So um, you got to. Why don't you mention, you had talked to me about uh, an idea. So I don't think this is completely s solved. I mean, this, this to me, and I, if I have a different understanding of the letter, and I'll make this really quick. It sounded like people may or may not be using my yard to dump material that may or may not be in the back of my yard. Right. And they may or may not have my permission. Is there is there is there an easement there? No. Is there a right no. away? No. No. Then no. it's his responsibility. If, if that pile is growing, it's his responsibility. He he has fence on the sides and the back, except for one section, which is right. open, which is directly in front of that pile. Which has a path. Yeah, we won't. It has a path that. worn <laughs> that into the ground. Straight straight to the right. pile. And that's right. what I wanted to ask the chief of police to say. You know, it it seems pretty there's obvious. Right? There's, to me, there's a whole lot of Can they go by this evidence. obviousness? <laughs> right. that that um, so that was one of the questions. But I thought that was Sunnyside. It was suggested that. And also in this letter, he said that he wouldn't have a problem allowing the town to remove right, it, I remember that. but it would tear up his lawn. He doesn't. He didn't say that in the letter, but it would. And so I checked into that, and there's about five thousand dollars worth of repairs that would be um, have to be done to that lawn. So that's really not a viable option. Um, we could put up a chain link fence because he refuses to put up a fence. Right on our side right. um, with barbed wire on the That's top and, and, you know, maybe electrify it. And cool boat. <laughs> How about just, just, raise just, raise just, just kidding. <laughs> save, save the cost on the barbed wire and the electrification. Just put up a camera. Um, put no, up a but, camera. but we, yeah, but we could put, a cam. put up a fence. Yeah. And in that spot, that's chain link and, yeah. and have that done. That would so there's some options. This is, it really hasn't played through. I mean, there's still time. But also in the letter, he said people have been adding to the pile since, which you just know anything about. To me, I'm so territorial. No one would walk on my lawn. That's right. That's right. I, I, I would go crazy. They do it because they're allowed I, to do it. That's, yeah. that's I the applaud thing. this um, guy's neighborliness. Um, but so, so with this thought of if the town, if the town were to install some sort of fence, and maybe get in there and do try and remove some of this uh, compost how material. Gonna, how are you gonna no, I can't. I think you, you can't cannot remove it. remove it. You can't remove it. So, so just fence. So up. I checked out with George to ask him about mitigation. They owe us some mitigation, and I said, "What do you yeah. think? Let's run some numbers here." So we get about three grand, two grand to remove the pile. DPW is working. All right, to, to pull it out of there. With that gone, put the fence up. We're about three grand. That's where he was with his mitigation for the uh, Walker Street, Walker's Brook Drive uh, bus stop. 
but then the repair of the lawn yeah, yeah. becomes uh -huh. the issue, which would have to happen. And I, and and the other thing is, um, does the town want to get into picking up all these piles all over the place? Well, yeah. it's, it's so at least we talked about it. It it seemed like it may work, but then at the end it didn't. You know, I have my doubts that issuing you know a, a ticket will be productive. I, I think he's he'd win that all day in an appeal. I, I just don't think we can say it was him. Yeah, um, we don't have any proof. Yeah. I just think we're chasing our tails, and we can should just send the letter and you know say it's criminal or whatever it is. I don't know. It's fine. It's punishable by a fine, and if you continue to do it, it's on you. But I don't think we can really enforce it. I know we're on we're on public access. It's frustrating. Though. It's just I know it's frustrating, but. They well, handle midnight's frustrating too. We have to look at going forward. No, I mean, I mean, we have to pick our battles. I'm serious. No, I'm serious. I'm but, serious. But we if, have to pick our battles. Well, we can't just. Well, we also have to find out how, how do we stop it from getting any continuing, because it's already done, and we can't. But we have no we mechanism in place right now to to stop these things. Besides the chain link fence. Well, we have a chain. Right. Yeah, we have right. everything okay, that yeah, the town but, can but do. Uh, even putting a chain link fence in, how how are you going to get that in? You can't go into. He, he won't let you. Uh, yeah. Just the tenor of that letter. I don't think he'd allow you to well, we could go access in. his property. You'd have to go in. Go into Pinevale, yeah. Pinevale. Well, no, the, the, neighbor, the, sure. the neighbor behind who's, who's well, been keeping an eye on the problems, area, I think. we could go in through her yard. I think, the, I think the town could put in 10 feet of chain link fence, whether they have to carry it in or not, yeah, or however out. they're going to get it in there. Or maybe a, a, a neighbor that's... Uh, Sympathetic to the commission would okay. allow them. And there is one there. Yeah. yeah there is one. There is one. Yeah. There may be more than one. <laughs> There's one. There, there may be more than one. The, yeah. one, the one who reported it. Right. There right. may be Definitely. one. And said, she said she would be watching out. So she's obviously in favor of it. Well, I, you know, we can just leave it alone and, um, you know, leave it alone and, and, and see if. I mean, the town picks happens? the leaves up on the curbside. What the hell is wrong with people? I'm serious. It's free. Put your leaves on the curbside, and we'll pick you them up. Oh no, that's bags. too hard. All those bags. I mean, seriously. You gotta pay for. You gotta fill, You gotta stuff those bags. Those long you bags. can even yeah. use barrels. You can use plastic barrels, and they'll dump them yeah. into the thing and leave the barrels. Yeah. yeah. I just think we we need or something. Or you can mulch your leaves. There's a novel concept. Yeah. Yeah. We need something in place because if if we don't start. Um, if we don't start with some effective policy or practice or something, it's going to become because it's getting pervasive rampant throughout, throughout the town. I'm seeing piles of stuff like out in Christian Woods. There's piles. It's of regular. Stuff. So it's and they're dumping in the town forest. So I mean, it's you need a policy or something. Right? I don't know what it is. Well, we're legally dumping in the town forest, aren't we? No, well, that's not they're technically. Just, they're the just going in and dumping I'm on, on the other side. Oh. Anyway. Um. So I, I, it just, I mean, how, how do you enforce that? How do you, I mean, unless you see someone dumping leaves and say, hey, who are you? You know, it's, I mean, how do you say, you know, I mean, so it's well, probably only deer, on weekends. Deer cams. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's it. Yeah. One of those, uh, well, you know, <laughs> deer cams right next Maybe. to the property. <laughs> You know, right we could, instead of, how about instead of the DPW installing a fence or even removing it, we could set up some surveillance cameras on our property, only shining on our property, not on anybody else's, but okay. places where we know dumping happens. It's a quick solution. I got, a, I, got a, I got a better idea. Let's put up signs that say there are surveillance cameras and not put the surveillance cameras in. <laughs> you were being watched. And, and and the fine you know, uh, that's being violated. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I think it's great team. because I think that, you know, you've, you've lessened my workload <laughs> with this throughout the town, not just in this one spot, because this is an exercise that doesn't have to happen anymore. I mean, really, there's nothing we can do about it. Seriously. Other than talk about it. And, no, and, that's, and, no. You could go as far as taking this guy to court. But it takes the commission to be behind that and willing to do it. But if you know that if that's in, and I know it's all yeah. on a hope and you just want to like you know what are you going to get out of it? Well, you're going to cause this guy a day of you know a lost day's pay, 
all that kind of stuff, but you can prove you know, that you're you know, serious. Now, now, <laughs> now, 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 now I'm not saying that somewhere. should happen, but I'm just but saying. Now you're going somewhere. I mean, we take one person to court, and even if they lose, people might be a little hesitant to say, do I really want to waste my time, even if I'm going to win, going to court and doing this and doing that? You know what well, I'm saying? That, that I hate to make an example yeah, out of someone, but, but still. Place, I don't think anyone's going to blame us probably up for it. For, for you know being tough on a pile of dirt that's 40 by 40 or whatever it is debris right, right. that the entire neighbor has you know, neighborhood has the ability to access and use it's crazy but but I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm hearing what you're saying I mean maybe maybe that is the way to go and, and then you know I mean it may be it's probably bad press for the no I don't think it's bad press I mean look at the pile it's not bad press. But who's going to say? But who's going to look at that pile and say, "Oh, it's just redistribution of leaves." That's what they're going to say. That's what they're going to say. Right. Well, no, that's what this guy said. No, I mean, I get so that attitude from redistribution of, uh, you know, biomatter. Yeah. Well, let's think about that. Well, I, you know, I think I mean, that's the direction I think we'd have to go. I mean. Have you? Well, you, you could, you know, you could put a fence from one end wire. of his property to the other. It could totally cutting, cutting him out. You know, but that doesn't put people fence. on notice. What's that? That doesn't put people on notice. Well, it would, well they'd it have would to go through that, someone else's yard. Neighborhood. And I don't, <laughs> yeah. you know, that neighborhood I, would find out. About I don't know if cut anyone. The, cut the fence. That's true. That's, That's true. my feeling about him. Cut what? the fence. Yeah. Cut the fence. Cut That's the true. fence. That's true. You know, oh, that'd be he with may that. or may not cut the fence. Oh, we can say somebody else did it. Okay? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, at the, at the last <laughs> meeting, uh, Rebecca, Ali, and Terry, and me, we all voted that we were amenable to issuing a littering fine. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, if he didn't show up. For today's meeting. Oh, yeah, because yeah. we, well, we said we wanted apparently. to talk to him. And he says, stick, he says, stick it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to come. Um, you know, but again, it comes down to, you know, how far we, we really have to consider strongly how far we are willing to go with this. Are we willing to go? Well, the problem of a literary fine is if he objects to it, we have no peace to get it. So how is it going to hold up? You don't know. It, it, <laughs> might go through arbitration or something like that, but you'd have to be willing to spend some time doing this. Yeah. And you might lose. But, yeah. you keep but, 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 but even if you lost it, would be like you, you kind of put someone on notice at this. But that's it. it was yeah. serious, I mean, and know? that's... It's a message that's going chances out. Chances are we would lose anyway, but at least... But it'd be great publicity. Well, that's what I mean. People might yeah. say, well, you know, maybe I will leave them on the curb. It's, you yeah, know, maybe, maybe I shouldn't... So we think a, 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 a littering fine and, and lose it, but get the publicity. <laughs> that just, that educates the people some way. I think most people don't understand why it's bad. We, we have a couple more options before we, we issue the fine. I mean, we could set up the deer camera. We could ask yeah. the friends in the neighborhood to see if they could just take a picture of whoever is dumping if they happen to see them. Yeah, because no one's going to be dumping and I, before. And again, I could ask if it if it really. If, if, you know, if, if the access is through someone's yard and the pile is a foot away from the edge of it, I mean... Right, they've got to be responsible. Would, would the police issue a fine based on that evidence? Right. And that's what I wanted to know. Well, why don't you keep investigating that with the police? And... I think there's a reason why you're not getting called back. They probably think you No, he's... he's you know, I'm not, not, I'm not really sure of where he's, where he's at with this. I think that some days he feels very confident that it's not going to be his problem or pend on him. And, and other times when he's talked to me, like he said that he would come to the meeting two times and then backed away. So, um, and he, and I think in this letter he just said he didn't want to get blamed for it because because no one else in the neighborhood would show up. He didn't want to be penned for this problem. Even though it's right opposite his backyard. You know how he, you know how he just fixes it all. He says, "I'm gonna st I'm gonna stop it from happening. It won't happen behind my house anymore." And that's it. It's over. It's done with. Yeah. Put up that so, section of fence. Well, well, stop right. it. Yeah. Well, I mean, just 
He, he would say to that tell his neighbors, right. you cannot use my yard. Do you think he's collecting a fee? That would be, be the only well, reason go. why this yeah. makes sense. Yeah. You know, he has a little composting business going. We, we could speculate. The neighbors for can save a little gas money on going down the street. I, I, you know, I don't know. I, I, well, we're not going to catch anybody doing it until next October, November, anyway. <laughs> well, they were, they were doing it between the last meeting and this meeting during the it, no what, snow times. Was that when they relocated or they added new stuff? No, no, someone said they, didn't they say they added, added new stuff? stuff? The letter said they, where, where they, they, they get thought it, it was added. they took part of it and dragged it further in and spread it out. Maybe That's there's what it pictures says. of those people. The neighbor did, did redistribute it. did mention that um, we need some pictures. Who's that woman who is along Sunnyside who? I don't know. You better have a telephoto lens then. Because it will stick to you um, the person's not going to do much. I mean, I, I think we have, we need a solution for this. It, it can't keep happening in town. It needs to be, people, people need to be responsible for their property. Well, it's not their property. <laughs> they need to be responsible for their access way. <coughs> their access to the town property. I mean, can't we can't we say that? Yeah, you know, those people bought that property because they like it bordering Pinevale. Well, that's it. They want those trees in their back. Yeah, the it's it's that area. added oh, privacy. Yeah, it's you know, it's their own private dumping area. Well, we keep clearing that area out. There's like smoking pipes and paraphernalia sure. and stuff out there, too. So. In sure. Pinevale? Yeah, in Pinevale. The girls going to do the work on that. We clean up. So it, it doesn't sound like it doesn't so sound like we're ready to issue fines tonight. Uh, yeah, I think we should just see what happens because we we don't have to issue a fine if we if it if we are advised that it would take a picture or better evidence, then we may have some options of getting pictures or or setting up some cameras. Yeah. Um, or just having you know, more surveillance in the yeah. area. I'm not yeah. sure if the commission wants to drive past every once in a while, the police want to drive past. You I know, mean, I, think, I think the existing oh, residents are we go the best eyes and ears for this. Um, I mean, and, and not to be redundant on other issues, but, you know, I'm sure there are other towns that have dealt with this. Uh, you know, does MACC have a Q&A, like a forum on this, um, you know, on getting May. compliance with they actually have a uh, seminar at, the, at this MAC conference. Did you sign up? Oh, for it? I have my form tonight. I'm going to sign How up. How to get it. neighbors from stop dumping leaves on huh. conservation property? Did I you saw really? It. Yeah, didn't I email okay. you? <laughs> if only. Missed it. <laughs> Missed it. Uh. So let's let's drag this out. Let's continue it to the next meeting. Let's kick the can. Okay. Down the road. There's also a workshop on the yard. Because yeah, this right. was successful. Yeah. And again, you know, we have the people on what's name that street, the other street there that that have some dumping issues. Dustin, filling. Yeah, know. Dustin, dumping and filling. So this is well, a little. It's, a little it's Dustin. Yeah. It's Henzy. Do you remember the grass clippings that were dumped like last yeah, fall? You know, it's work. it's it's in every conservation. I bet if we walked the property line of every conservation land, we would find. Yeah, so dozens or even hundreds of spots. It either makes dumping. sense not to do anything about it anywhere or to, to take this issue here and try to solve it, try to develop a method I think, that we could use. I think we need a, a productive approach and a, and a series of steps that are clear and agreed upon. And I mean, this is really the first person that really said, I'm not... I'm not even, responsible. I'm not even going to bother listening to you guys about this. I may or may not be responsible. Okay. I don't know. It's like that Any guy ideas? Back, Josh Eaton, who said, well, it's conservation lands. I can do what I want there. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. The thing with this is, hmm? the thing with this is it's, yeah, it's filling and it's, but it's not, it's not real egregious, and I remember a long, long time ago, um, y you know, uh, right in back of Market Basket? Yep. That whole uh, medical complex? Yep. Mm. Guy filled the wetlands back there. I mean, one day, one 
afternoon and he just filled it. And the Attorney General, not the Attorney General, um, uh, District Attorneys, Assistant District Attorneys took him to court. But it took a lot for this commission. And it was one of the first ones that they went after. Mm -hmm. But it took, took a lot to do that. And it was filling. And it was a lot of wow. It was a gracious filling. It was definitely filling. And he did it surreptitiously and against the CONCOM. You know, he really thumbed his nose at everybody, too. Um, this. That's tough. This is smaller in scale. Tough. And that's, that's yeah. you know, to me, it's like, oh, are you going to win this? Is the effort, you know, what, what is right. it that, that you can do to, to stop this? I don't know. I think, I, I think it's a tough, tough, tough. I think battle. exploring it, though, is worth our time. So that we can, well, I, I thought think it Chuck is. Had a good idea with the police. Yeah. I mean, what is it? I mean, they can't just go. People just can't go and dump on town land, right? Right. I mean, what they, have they done in the past? Yeah, but the police can't issue a fine unless they have proof of it too. So it's kind of caught. I mean, maybe us. even some involvement from the police alone is enough to say, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? Yeah, so come over and look at it. Yeah, like if the cop comes by, just to look at his backyard, sort of thing. If, I had well, a report of dumping. We could, the, yeah, exactly. Members of the commission could go with the police to the conservation property, to make it very evident why we're there, and that would probably be a nice message. Because that may be enough to the law-abiding citizen. Maybe enough to be like, whoa, wait a minute, maybe I better you know, think about this. Yeah, you know? we'll get the cop. Chuck, why don't you at least have a con visit. have that conversation? <laughs> that might be a nice <laughs> with the, effective with the police and education. see what. Just have that conversation and see what's what no, no, they I, suggest. I or wanted to, and I and I, I think that so, I'm, I feel completely opposite of what you're saying. Like, is it worth the effort? This could be solved. I'm, let's minus out the fact that I that the pile should be removed. But to solve this issue is going to take one six foot piece of fence. Yeah, you can't lift the leaves over the fence. And owner to say, stop coming into my yard. That's all it takes. Yeah. Stop coming well, into my yard. Two things. And, and we're within our rights because it's the town property. Yeah. So, and, and if, all right. And if, I'll, I'll, I'll go along with that. <laughs> okay. Well, I, well, I, I just, agree that he's probably going to just kind of cut it and be like, yeah, oh, I, I, look at the fence. And you know what? Somebody came in the middle of the night and trespassed I on my bet you And then, we, work, then it's vandalism. I bet you it would work. Five out of ten times, but five five other times, it, it, I think that that fence would be cut. But look at the cut through it, jo uh, Joshua. Yeah, Joshua they Eaton. Keep, they keep, oh, yeah. 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 The, the amount they of traffic, traffic right through over. Joshua Eaton. But is. but now he's got a chain link fence with a hole in it. It just makes no sense to me. I don't want a chain link fence there in the first place. I don't want a hole in my fence. I don't right. want people walking in right. the backyard dumping stuff when I'm not home or even when I'm home. It just makes no sense. I mean, that pile is going to attract rats. I mean, it just, it's crazy. <laughs> All right, squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference? You know, you might, you might get the resident's <laughs> attention if you say rats. Yeah, right. You know, so. We, we could rats just spread mistruths and make people terrified <laughs> you know of compost you know piles. This might be the better so that thing would to be. do. I'm going to walk. I have to, I have to do a, a, a talk with the scouts coming up in the next <laughs> month. And I'm going to try to put my name out there to do another talk and walk with the scouts. And what we're going to do is like a apple walking and, you know, placing. So we're going to we're going to place apples inside debris piles to attract rats. And then Seriously? <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you like You don't think the scouts would want to do that? Do we even have rats nope. already? Yeah. Yes. I don't think yeah. Yes. No, I remember them from the. There's absolutely no rats in Reading. <laughs> no, it's true. Well, politicians maybe. But. <laughs> I thought there were rats <laughs> over by. Um, nope. The those bagel aren't rats. Store. No, those are not rats. Those are squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> and like yeah. I said. <laughs> I thought they weren't keeping up with their dumpster one time, and it was attracting rats. I thought it was a health department thing. Interesting. Well, All right. No. Hey, no. Sure. Like, I'm telling you, those bagels are good. Though. Gotcha. Let's move on to the agenda items. Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> next, next on the business. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Um, administrator's report. Uh, 
Or do you want to talk about rats? No, no, no. I think my report was on this guy. <coughs> I was going to add to that. Um, and I'll tell you that Sturgis Park has been uh, postponed until March 11th. Okay. So that was that's my, so George Zamboris asked us to um, continue that to March 11th, and the town has brought in a order of conditions for a general permit. Oh, great! So <laughs> the one that expired, they're doing a new one. I think we should take our time with this to get it yeah. right because it's likely once it's done to be, um, you know, uh, continued yeah. or yeah. added to or. For five to seven years. So. <coughs> now, let me ask. So, George said that there were a number of townwide permits. Which one is he bringing in? Uh, they just dropped it off. I didn't look like through one it, but for it was for storm, storm water. Storm water, one for. This okay. is a storm water one, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, any bills? No bills yet. There will be one for the MACC. Okay. Uh, speaking oh, of MACC, I'm going to pass. Is it too late for me to pass my... Did you... If we didn't hear from you, you got, you got the... I only got yours. You got mine, okay. You good. just got mine. Good, all right. You did get mine, all right, because I didn't get a confirmatory email, so I figured, I figured you got it. I emailed it to you, so... Um, Rebecca, Allison, are you interested in going to the MACC oh, conference? You can't make I totally it. forgot about it. On my hand. Are you interested in... Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll do it what's the deadline for submitting the well for you to get town payment and um, I mean haven't no no, no it, it doesn't work that way we they're they're okay with us we'll send everything in and they'll send us a bill okay so okay I mean I would think between now and the next meeting you would want to pick your classes yeah is the oh yeah here it is right here so is there one of surveillance cameras so, well, so but that's Allison's the not appended. going to be at the next meeting, so you need to get that to no, check I'm gonna on do your tomorrow. own. Okay, yeah, I'll do okay. tomorrow. I just completely forgot about it. All right, <laughs> and sometimes Allison we carpool. Okay. Sometimes, yeah. So um, I think I still owe an eager ride or two. Or <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever. So um, so just right now, do you know that, we can do that over email because I'm not going to be at. Teach. Is, I think this is my last meeting. For a while. For a while. Yeah. Uh, like let's let's address that next then. So, um, so Allison is out for the next five meetings. So she's not going to be here in February, March, or the first meeting in April due to a class. Um, and when's, since tonight is Terry's last night. And when's Jamie coming back? Well, he, he, he better meeting. be back Jamie for the next had meeting. Jamie told me that he thought that his Dallas project was going to. Um, not need him so much coming up in the future and I'll have more time for the commission okay. so it may be good timing so if anybody um, I'm, I'm not gonna have a, a conflict I am probably gonna have conflicts in that time period so I'm just warning you, you now is, I, is I don't there have any anything, way to I don't have anything scheduled right now okay. but um, you know I know that um, I know that Groveland meets on Wednesdays there may be other towns that I have to go to the meet on Wednesdays a lot of them don't meet on Wednesdays so I'll, mainly like Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, not mm. Wednesdays. But okay. I'm just saying, I, as soon as I know, you'll know. Okay, um, yep, because maybe we could, instead of, maybe we could move the schedule around, you know, if we have to. I don't know. We could we move it to the first and third. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Um, and that way, Allison, Wednesday? maybe you'd be it able to, to make Wednesdays it. because this room's occupied, from what I understand. For the other four days? For the other, the other four days, yeah. I, th I think so. Is that, I don't is have that my phone, you know I can't look at my... Well, I, know I have your class okay, dates. Yeah, I, I, don't have I have your class dates, but okay. I don't. We have zoning meetings in here, CP meetings. I, I on think Wednesdays. it's scheduled, yeah. 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 Because I do know yeah, no, we I have, don't have, I don't have rescheduled. So actual if we have to get to that, we may have to get to that. These are just ones I'm We may have to get, I'm just saying. Say if we have to reschedule to a different night or something. Yeah, because I can't miss class, because if you miss class, you like dropping letter grades and stuff, so. Yeah. I gotta tell you, my my night schedule is just so filled with everything else. So I you do. wouldn't be able to. Yeah. Well, all right. It, so, yeah. so it, it, yeah. well, I'm not yeah. saying no. I'm, not, I'm just saying that it would be tough. Then it would become tough for me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But it's it, so I would be more like you were saying. Yes, I know something's gonna come up if we right. start changing things right. around. Right. But. Um, okay. 
Well, it's something to look out for, if, if possible. If you could reschedule any of your stuff. Are there, uh, has there been any talk to previous members or new members from the commission? Has anybody talked to Will? Will is not coming back. No. Okay. He told me that this weekend. Sure. Um, everybody I know lives in Boston, so. <laughs> 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 well, if, if an opportunity arises, you know, please talk to other people. How old are your kids now? No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, they've been on enough site visits. Yeah. Is yeah, well. So there are a couple other things. The it's a good scarce. Go ahead. The, the uh, school, I sent out the schools. Yeah. Any problem with any of those placements of the school? I had some comments on that. Um, first of all. big. First of all. Wetlands protection comments? Well, hmm. Chuck, I need to ask about Barrows. What is the resource area? Is it the conservation area? Is it the forest? Um, one of those was taken off a of plan. Because um, I know the area between the ball field, this area right in here is forest. And I didn't know, I don't know if that was, this, this is Barrows, so this barrows, is okay. forest. Yeah. Are you saying there's I don't think there's wetland. No, that came so off a plan. That's the one that George took off a plan for something that was done in the future. That was the only one that I mean, I they know, had a filing for. I know this has had conservation oversight um, because... Have all the schools already? Is there <laughs> but I didn't know what the jurisdictional area was for Barrows. So I didn't, see, I didn't see any big issue, honestly, with the two placements at Barrows. Um, for Ch for Killam, okay. is their whole back play yard wetlands the area between the back school and Haverhill Street? It's like a hill. It's not a Killam. It's pretty flat. Mm, when you're driving changed, Haverhill Street, I guess maybe from when I remember the, it was a hill near yeah. the hospice and the lights over I, there I, by I, Burbank. I, I went to Killam. So yeah, I know. No, it's not. I think that it might, it might be less than more. they might have graded it since I, but that was probably 15 years ago at this point. So. Seemed, seemed bigger than the small. Yeah, maybe when I was little, it seemed bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think this whole back area of Killam is very, very flat, and I think there is some drainage back here. So, so this modular classroom might be close to resource area. It might be on where pavement. Else you, where else can you put it though? There's a I, resource area. I don't know. Right? How about here? That's school. probably a f probably a. Fire well, we're, thing. we're what you're saying is you want to see Killam come in and prove that they uh, are not in the wetland or pile. Yep. And yep. any other ones? Um, well, Joshua Eaton. For Joshua Eaton, I know it's um, that stream that goes option. Right need why, to why check. With the hole in the, in the fence. I'm more in support of option right one here, than right? option two. So you want to see this him about Joshua Eaton also? Like right. Yep. Right. Okay. Right. And there's anything the else? The nope. So it's right. Oh, I guess I was wondering, um, are these modulars they just put it um, right by the fence and have, hand, have well, dug yeah, foundations? Be right there. I, don't, I don't understand I think the they construction go on, um, they go on piers. What? What? But, but huh? so they're going to be digging in like sauna tube this? things. Okay, they didn't gotcha, say gotcha. Gotcha. 16 or a bunch of them. But they're, they're, they're kind of odd they're how they're doing it like though. that. But there's what? Are well, we running out of space in the schools? Yeah. This is something a lot of towns are doing. Yeah, Lexington and yep, we're running out. Burlington and I don't know what the other we're ones were. We're running out of space. And I think at Joshua Eaton. Give them three or four years. This is going to be all the um, one extended exit, day kindergarten rooms. from what I'm hearing. It's a closet. Yeah. Hmm. It's right here. That's the only All right, so I have two. You want to have them come in to talk about and, and file. Or at least to see. Or at least an RDA or a, I mean, some more information. I, I don't. An RDA would work, I think. I know that when they were doing some construction, yeah. I forget who it was, the consultant, but they were in here a lot. There had to be something jurisdictional. There was something jurisdictional, but I'll tell you, I mean, I walk there every day, and I do is not there, see for this anything, whole band, I see no wetlands, no. anything right in here? In here, there is a valley and a gully, 
and there and there's some steep slopes in there and so there might be something jurisdictional in that woods more but than this away. is on pavement I'm, I'm sorry what? is that valley more than 100 feet away i don't know from the option two probably hmm. option one i think if they're coming in they can talk right. about each each one anyways hmm. it doesn't have to turn into Right consultants. I don't see this going to a notice of intent. It's in it. No. It's in the basketball court. Yeah. yeah, I don't see any. I mean, unless Killam is the only thing that could be close to me is Killam. If if there's a stream, I've been to plenty of soccer games along in that area, and it's very wet there in the spring. We're, like getting your sandals wet when you're walking in it. You're talking about over by Haverhill? Or? I'm talking about, yep, so here's Haverhill Street. Yeah. I'm talking, talking in this area. Yeah, right there. Um, yeah, there's a big culvert there from what I remember. So I think Killam's, I think the field is pretty wet. Okay, well, so it's a normal sized culvert that we used to climb on. <laughs> Joshua Eaton and I have barrows down that you want to talk uh, to them about. Yep. Or at least prove that they're more than 100 feet away. So they get a wetland scientist out there to go to those three schools and they're either in it or out of it, and then they would have to file or not. But don't, you know, don't you know schools in Reading are a wetland indicator? <laughs> they are. I've heard. Well, that's, so are, that's what Bill says. So are landfills. <laughs> landfills Across cool. the state are wetland indicators. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's the cheapest land. Where do you want to put can, that trash? Put yeah, it over there yeah. by the wetland. Yeah. You know, Joshua Eden, we Joshua Eden is out. right That's on, right. Yes. To, for my, I think Joshua Eden is right on the fence. I mean, it's hard to tell by this plan, but isn't, That's there's, that there's is. that stream down here, right? right? Mm -hmm. This is the ball field. So <laughs> that big hole is in the that fence. really a hundred feet? I don't know. And how are they going to construct it? And I, you know, so anyway. And right, the reason that, that I didn't have a big like issue with Barrows is because like the first so option is, is a stream. Op sorry, option two is entirely on pavement. In, right. in where? Josh on, at Barrows. At it's Barrows. entirely on pavement. There's nowhere so. else these things can go. No, I know. There's, right. Maybe there's right. two options, but those are the only two. Right. No, I know. And I think for... And it's all previously degraded. Yeah. Or degraded but unaltered. Yep. Yep. So that's my input for that. When might we see something from from these? Yeah. I, I okay. don't know what their time frame Alaska. is. There was an initial meeting to try to understand what what uh, groups would be asking of them. Okay. And right now, the commission is asking on Some three, sort of the, of three of the four properties that you would like more just to prove that you're not inside the wetlands. Yeah. And the, depending on what that comes back as, you know, they're definitely, I, won't, I only see these as uh, RDAs. I yeah, I think so too. I and think it could so be too. one RDA for all three schools. I mean, for all three schools, how could it's, it's, it's probably a, a standard drawing yeah. for all the locations because they're the same dimensions. So. They are. Pretty standardized. Which is good. Okay. Um, minutes for approval. So, um, so we have a nice copy of them here. Um, Julia, on just a little typo at the bottom of the first page. Mm -hmm. uh, town mm -hmm. of Reading mm -hmm. instead of Tel. Um, and the rest of it looked fine to me. I didn't get a On copy the last of that. Page, the Angel project, right? You have a seconded by question mark. Oh, but then there was a seconded by Mr. Sell. Oh, okay. Selly, Rebecca. Why don't we just put him in? <laughs> he was here. My wife says if I sell Sell, it means the same as married. He doesn't like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And were there, did Jamie have edits? I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard Jamie. from Jamie. He's no. not okay. as active as okay. he's been. Okay, used to be. The minutes. Okay, so uh, motion to approve the minutes as amended tonight. 
I'll second that. Okay, all those in favor? Opposed? I, I abstain. Abstain, one no, abstention. I'm abstaining too. Okay, mm -hmm. you abstain too. I think um, you don't have to abstain. There's, no, <laughs> there's two other matters I want to get to really quickly. They're not on the. They're not on the agenda, but. Um, Wait a minute, what about the 83 stainless steel railing rods? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, we're trying to figure out why they were, how amount. they were stolen, but this, it's going to cost us 270 bucks to replace them. I wouldn't replace them with stainless steel. You got a, something cheaper or something more stable? Is that, the, the, something what, that's not, is not that going to be stolen. <laughs> is that that platform? Well, was, was How like, about rope? Well, it's got to be something so people don't fall through. It's that platform out in the middle of the field, right? right? It's, it's a yeah. railing. It's probably going to meet the building code. So, well, How yeah. high is this thing off the ground? Uh, maybe three feet. High enough to get injured. Um, it's about three feet or I, so on I that end. I think wooden, wooden pressure treated um, balusters. Uh, balusters. Oh. And the reason why I say that is it may cost the same. It's probably not going to cost the same. It's probably be a, lot, be a lot cheaper. They're not going to get stolen. Yeah, they were sold to scrap, yeah. no doubt. So. What they thought was that they, what they had put in like 30 and a half inches, and they want to make it 33, and then do it in, and then put the cap on the top, and that would stop anybody from stealing them. But I don't know. They were thinking maybe they got a bolt cutter and just snapped them. Yeah, exactly. So, it, so it could go. Who's paying for these? The trail committee. I, I, I put think anything you want in there. I, th <laughs> I think it should. I, I, I like Still the put lead. The stainless steel, but if they're going to be all. stolen, no lead, lead pipes. Wood, wood is just you go in there. You probably don't put have copper. Yeah, that, that would be bad. Yeah, yeah that, that would, would be bad. The environment. You would you would think T that titanium. You would think that the stainless yeah. steel would be. A, wouldn't yeah, too bad you couldn't figure out a way to. You know, again, you guys need a you know, deer camera. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they'll steal that we instead. Need, we, need yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, need, we need cameras throughout we Redding, I think. Steal, we'll steal that deer camera right yeah. there. Yeah. 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 We could go to ATVs and Steve. He won't be able to run around in there when they're not supposed to. But, but that, that's the thing. I mean, yeah. I, I would the shape of a deer. I mean, stainless steel. <laughs> that's about the scrap metal. Well, we'd have to read <laughs> with a camera in the eyes. All the ones out that didn't get stolen, we'll too. Uh, and then, so I, I'm, and, and they may have an order. Uh, we're, we're just a little remote camera February, that so turns on, uh, motion activated. That's the thing. It turns on. I understand the, the, the different yeah. construction method, but yeah. like they just took a bolt cutter and done. So, so you guys done with? You all set with? Yeah. Yeah, that was are you gonna are you, are you gonna get the notice back to the trails committee? Are you gonna be around long enough to communicate this I'll back to, to trails Gardner committee? The, the cool. and mention him that we thought something okay. might be better, but then it's not an environmental issue. What's that? No. Maybe we should put steel or wood or whatever. I don't think so. No. Copper would be, but they could really be getting them taken. Yeah. Right. Copper and journal pool if you want to. Silver. Maybe. Yeah. Sure. Copper's a so is there anything else in the packet that? We talked about everything, right? No, no there were two other items I'm trying to get to. Um, yeah. um, so one of them is uh, Chuck and I are going to try and um, do a presentation to the DPW this spring um, and to, to kind of give them sort of an info session of like here are some of the basic things to avoid um, with a couple examples. Somebody's got a phone ringing. Um, so does anybody have any thoughts or input as we begin planning for that meeting? Well, in conjunction with that, we also talk maybe about getting in touch with the realtors and making them aware that they have responsibilities when they're getting people to buy houses to educate yeah, them too. And, but I did. I did make a phone call to a longstanding realtor, and the realtor said basically it's um, buyer beware. That that's the real estate law. Yeah, but doesn't the realtor have a moral responsibility? Apparently not. Huh? Well. <laughs> well. If buy beware is their attitude, then it doesn't sound like they feel they have a moral responsibility. Sounds like the loss is more yeah. uh, sending the message of buyer beware. And did you double check that with another realtor? I did not, because I haven't had a chance to do that. I'm not saying that. So ignorant right. of the no, law is that's a good point. I should. You know. You know, or a real estate lawyer, or, um, you know. It's, so It's probably true, but it doesn't. I, I, I asked the realtor when my parents were buying the Cape House, I asked them, asked her if they had to tell us if, they, if we were in, like, the floodplain for, like, more insurance, and she said no. Yeah. Hmm. So that's similar to the yeah. same thing. It's like, it's, it's, she said it was you know, literally buyer beware. Like they, it's on it's on the buyer to go research on their own. Which is through why. The web, through the public websites, whether or not that they're in. 
whatever resource area. Or Which makes sense because that's why you'd hire a home inspector to go and mm -hmm. be kind of your advocate to go through the house and identify issues. Yeah, and they never so, walk the land. Right. So. Um, that's the free market, baby. So. Getting back to our DPW right. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering if anyone has um, good pictures to do a presentation. So I don't know if I have good pictures, but the kind of pictures I'm looking for is like a stockpile on top of a storm drain, a truck inside a wetland, you know, someone doing something that's so obvious that we get that no one else gets, I'll, and when I'll, you see it, you know, put the gravel have. road that DPW put out in the wetlands. I think what? they know about that. That gravel, gravel road, road that they put the out there. <laughs> a shed. Um, in the wetland. 31 Curtis, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna use that one a lot, aren't you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna carry it. Remember Thirty One Curtis? <laughs> oh my God, no. <laughs> well, I think I think I think it would be good. I, well, if these pictures you know, were I was thinking it was a real Redding. wetland, but then when you said it was typed. forested and you didn't see any indicators, I was like, ah, oh, this might be a kind of questionable situation. So that, I mean, I got that. I you probably should have made that more clear, but I, I got it when you were saying it. I've been I've been to those spots. <coughs> Some of them are pretty obvious, but that one was like, looking around. It's like I, I just it, yeah, it was just flat. Mm. So if anybody has pictures of egregious examples of I'll violations, the, uh, the, email them to Chuck. What do you call it at work and see if there's anything? Okay. Yeah. I or just want, if you have a couple ideas of what you want us, we're going to make it really brief and simple, simple, you know. Are there any photos from that oh, that uh, um, diesel truck rollover into the wetland? Oh. Remember that one? Were you here for that? I was wasn't that, here for that. Was that uh, wasn't the that only, on the highway? No, no, no. It was, it was in a uh, neighborhood over here. So the truck went over on the oh, side. Oh, oh, oh. That was off of... Um, it wasn't A Street or anything like that. No, but this is, this, is, this is geared to DPW. So like a stockpile of dirt on top of a storm drain is something they would they would do or they you know, just be careful, check your surroundings before you you do it. If they spill in a wetland, I think I think you won't have anything to worry about. But when they're cutting trees that are down in a wetland or removing them because we had something where they wanted to you know, some neighbor calls up and says, Hey look, there's this tree that's dead right. in the wetlands. Take it, can you take it down? And, and they did, and we want to make sure they understand that that's really not something to go after. Right. Or maybe you could take it down if it's going to fall on the road, but leave it. You know, that right. kind of stuff. There's pictures from that call. guy, um, was over by Oak, who wanted to cut two trees because he thought they were going to fall on his house. And then they were just inside the wetlands. There were two dead ones. On Oak Street? I don't know. I think it was, well, it was Pine. He came in and said that we, if it falls, if it goes at this 47 degree angle or something like that, it's going to hit my house and we want the permission to cut them down. But we had photos of a couple of trees that were half dead or dead on that one. I don't remember what it was, though. I'll, I'll check at work for, for any stuff like that. I can't recall any off the top of my head. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up, just so that uh, you guys know, so the town is going through its budgeting process of approving the town budget. Um, Jean and I had talked um, at the beginning of the year about um, trying to find more hours for Chuck, um, and there was some there was a discussion that um, sounded like uh, Jean was on board with getting Chuck. Um, an additional eight hours per week to um, manage Matera Cabin and take that over from John Fudo. Oh. Um, <coughs> in addition, so so um, I think at a meeting last week was it this week? It was last week. Was last week. A meeting last week. Um, right. Jean um, discussed this proposed additional um, time for Chuck, and it was met with some. Um, resistance from the Board of Selectmen. Um, they had questions about um, whether um, more time meant uh, more stringent. What, help me help me word this. More Just more time to crunch the people in Reading. Just more time equals more regulatory um, review on more, everything. More regulatory should, oversight. That's yeah. exactly what we're doing too much of it yeah. already. So, Gene made the point that you know it's because it's only it's illegal if you're not caught, right? Yeah, that's 
That's what I heard when I heard that. Well, I, I don't, I think that, you know, hearing from the selectmen, they just want to, they don't care. It's, it's, you know, there's a process, let's do it, but, you know, you know, try to make it as pleasant as possible. Maybe that's, that's Famous. what the thing is. So the Gene was trying to tell him that, hey, look, we have, we have a different person in the position right, now. Right. And that's not exactly what we're doing. We're, we're showing people how to, um, how to permit their project, not why you shouldn't do it in the first place. So uh, th that kind of attitude has changed. But, it, but she felt like even right, so, right, right. more had to be done. And she wanted the commission to put together a list of all the things that um, has changed from before till now, what more that you're doing, and um, and definitely make a few meetings and advocate yeah. for the position because that's what's going to work. So some of the things that I thought had changed was the commission is actually going out in the mornings to most of these sites like right. they have on West right. Street. Right. Jamie showing up, Anika showing up. Brian, you I followed saw me from the site, yeah. things like that. Anika's writing some of the letters for for me when I can't get to them, or she's coming downtown and doing things. We're meeting we, with people. We're or working taking with calls. the DPW just to figure out how they can have someone to call. People are taking advantage of the fact that we don't have a full time agent here, um, and we're you know we're cleaning this up. You know why did West Street happen? I, you know why did all these other things happen is it because there we don't have a, uh, a full-time agent or or is, would they happen in the first place I'm not sure yeah. also I had a resident come up here this weekend and said going to you first and finding what was needed here made the process so much more streamlined you have to come back a second or third time she had everything all the ducks lined up and it was in and out in 20 minutes and she was she said meeting of Chuck beforehand had such a benefit for that well, I think that's true, and I, th I think that that selectman that was on, you know, the committee before when someone said, hey, look, I was part of this, where, where someone was actually, you know, um, hauled and tarred and feathered here in front of the Con Conservation Commission, and he didn't want to have that happen again, you know, he, that's, that's a tough nut, because I, I don't know how to tell him that, um, you know, if you can get out to more people, tell them that yeah we do have an extra step you know if you have a wetland in your in your backyard but we've changed the regulations and to come in first is not it's not no there's it's I make it so simple for everybody I'm not afraid of telling them that they can have their order of conditions in the first place because it it just makes everyone feel a little bit better a lot of people come to me in the first place and say I'm not going to get my drawings or an engineer stamp until I know that I could probably do this. I always think that's from the past administration. You know, somehow the things were stopped before. Mm -hmm. So I, I will review them and give them my honest opinion. And I've only been surprised once during that time. Yeah. So. That's good. No, and I think, and you know, I think <clears throat> it makes a big difference having you in the position. And I think. Um, I think one of my concerns is, you know, if uh, if you, you know, if they do agree to the time for Matera, um, they're gonna there's gonna be this thought that you've got all this additional time, <laughs> and you and really you taking on Matera management is a is an added workload, and you know, and we're not gonna gain anything except maybe knowing a little bit better the ins and outs of how Matera has been operating. Um, and who's been there, and how has it been used, and how well, good is it right now? If What's if the condition? If you get him eight more hours, he, he, he wouldn't need eight hours from Matera. I don't think he would. No. No. John, Fudo John Fudo said seems to think he does. Just, what? Really? John I don't think he does. He no. just John, approves John for a Fudo. And John Fudo had it down to a to a working yeah. process, but what, he's what goes he, on down there? Well, you have <laughs> there's you have the Girl Scouts right. have me. Uh, 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 or like you can rent it out as a birthday party. Right. But I'm just saying, I mean, what, that takes down. eight hours a week? You walk about ready. Well, John does everything. He shovels. He cleans. Oh, he that's different. Out, that's man. different. He shows people, you know, that's some for a wedding would go there. There's a couple of visits. That's a lot different. Yeah. I didn't see you know? trouble. I can't imagine. You know, plus it's the whole yeah. management system of scheduling out Matera. Mm -hmm. That would be on him now. You know, and so... 
interfacing with um, recreation and whoever else wants to yeah, kind of follow up. And at first, but he, he proved it out yeah, so. while he works that so, much. So, so no. I don't know, he I, does. It's eight hours. So it doesn't sound like Chuck's gaining any hours then. Well, I think it sounded well, not, like there was a couple additional hours that. Um, For I, me, I'm gaining personally because I wouldn't be able to be in boxer. Right, and I understand that's huge. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge gain. that would be a huge gain. thing for me. That's a huge gain. Um, but uh, to so, help the commission, I can't imagine being here in the morning and just trying to juggling material throughout the week. It would be better. I'd be here in the morning. Yeah. I mean, it's more important to be in the morning for uh, right. I agree. Yeah, <coughs> in I the think, afternoon. Right. I think it makes sense. Yeah. But I, I, I think there's going to be some things that happen automatically. Um, but is there more time to do... More I mean, unless we're rewriting the regulations, which I was not very helpful with in the first time they came around because of my hours and the fact that I was new, unless we're taking on something big like that, it doesn't. It doesn't really. <coughs> it doesn't really matter. Although it would be nice to go to some of these site visits, and you know, I wouldn't mind doing that. Yeah, this yeah. would uh, pawn some of those responsibilities off on others. The site visits? I've already done that. No, no, no. I mean. Like Matera, some of the Matera stuff. I was thinking of, you mean Anika? No, I'm just saying Shuttle. in general. No, he's not thinking of <laughs> no, Like the shoveling to maybe another department or something, or, you know. <laughs> That's funny because we went out there on Sunday and The chair out. has to shovel. <laughs> so, so I don't know. I didn't, you I didn't would see say, a quick yeah, resigning chair, there, is what so you would I, say. We had to shovel it out ourselves on Saturday. Why do you keep going through chairs? Um, so, now where you see so you know, I mean, we could reevaluate how it's managed and whether additional fees need to be charged exactly, to people exactly. to cover. You know, you, you go and you uh, rent a condo, you do pay a little bit of a, some condo fee for the, a maid service to come in and clean it out, or you know, somebody exactly somebody to come through and clean it. There is know, a so. charge for um, using the material cabinet. So right. There is money coming right. in. I don't know right. Right. I think it's to. very fund, insignificant. I, I think it's. A, and I'm, and I'm not saying we need to hit up uh, residents. I, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't think but, but it might it might be cheaper. It might be better use of your time. Correct. Yeah. To kind of contract out some general service. So anyway, just a thought. Um, something to explore later. Well, if it happens, we'll talk time. about it. Yeah, yeah. If you so, were here in the morning, you could go down to this uh, to this site for community planning and determine, you know, oh, there's no wetlands there, it's no issue, boom, done. No, it would make my day a lot better. I mean, I'm just rushing around yeah. all I'm, I'm the time. I'm just saying, things like this, things like this this, this Austin prep thing where, yeah. you know, that that whole disposal site may have nothing to do with, with wetlands and a simple visit from you saying there is absolutely no wetlands here or no, we better, better look at this could take care of that and be done. They'd, all these emails back and forth would be yeah. unnecessary. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Save it saves, saves a lot of time. Mm -hmm. If you were here, you'd well, have that. Yeah, so that, right. wouldn't, that wouldn't be something that you guys would have on your site walk. And, and again, that, that is actually something that you're but, but, doing because but I it, can. But it helps the planning uh, mm -hmm. uh, department as well. Because, right. Because it, it just completely answers that question easily. So right. you, you would be of assistance to other departments. So true. So, um, so if anybody has any so brainstorms or ideas or we're as um, close as we've ever been, okay? And it's not just for it's not just for me. Um, it's for the position. So if yeah. I ever leave, you're going to have someone with thirty plus hours in the position, which would make a lot of sense. And that's huge. Grandfather, yeah, yeah. 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 And, it, yeah. and it is huge. huge. Yeah. So I, I, you know, obviously, I'm hoping that. Um, that it works out, but I think that you know what Jean Jean kind of understands what's going on. So whatever she wrote down about putting things together, the commission needs to come up with that, and they need to show up at these meetings and and say some stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I wasn't, you know, you did tell me I needed, you did tell me about that meeting, but I never called Jean and couple things came up so send, send I, unfortunately I wasn't email able email to make email those email meetings so in case you can't make it yeah yep, yep. all right we will do um, two other things I wanted to ask were these put around the um, Pinevale no okay you know why 
Why? It's not hunting season. Okay. For good reason. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. But they will be prior to hunting season next year. And I was kind of thinking okay. about how, how this would be done. So, um, you know. See, the funny... Someone hunting in private? See, the funny thing is th that resident said that she heard, um, you know, gunfire on Christmas night. So, of course, no, there's still no hunting we're, then. They, we're not... We can't stop the gunfire, but we no. can stop. No, the I know, but the, I'm I'm thinking the signage, kind of as soon as possible. But, but by the way, I, I talked to someone who said they know a surveyor who might be willing to go out and do that for us oh. to see that land. Uh, Jean Jacobs said she had someone. She was going to contact you, really? but if she hasn't, I will remind her again. Oh, all right. Well, have her contact Chuck. Chuck. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I yes, really I love that idea. Yeah. I think, yeah, I love that. I think yeah. that's a much better idea. That would be great. Um, um, the other thing is um, one of the Mr. Halsey was here. Well yeah, solve that problem. Because they can't build on it. Yeah. Right. Can't do right. anything it's with it. Yeah. 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 The story time, the, the story walk, the nature walk, um, was that, did, did you ever, did you get a letter back to, um, uh, Rachel Baumgartner Rachel about that uh, because she saw me at the library and she said, I didn't hear back on that. How did that go? So uh, I'll write her a letter. Yeah. I want to go on that walk. Yeah. I might even just send her an email. Because, because I think that's coming up in yeah, February. Yeah, it sounds like a good walk, though. So good. she may need advance notice in the library we to get that. We did talk them. prior to the meeting, and I... I'm okay. Pushing the show so I told her, I told her that it didn't have any... Obje it didn't hit any objections yes. during the meeting, so it was fine, so... Um, she said, oh, okay, okay. But I think she's waiting for something official before she starts advertising for it. Okay, then so. I, will, I will do that. Okay. All right, that's it from me. Any other business? I'm trying to end this before 11. Oh, do you want to say goodbye to Terry and thank yeah. him for his years of service Terry, and being such a wonderful you. guy to the commission? Thank you for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll so, take what I learned and go to Colorado. Where are, you going to, are you going to Boulder? Yeah, no, west of Boulder. Great. Okay. That's awesome. 8,200 feet. Are you going yeah, there for anything in particular? Out. My daughter lives there. <laughs> oh, not me. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Uh, it's in the air. It's just in the air. Terry's like, <laughs> like a hound dog. And <laughs> where's it legal? <laughs> you know? But it's funny. Enjoy it. That little town has more parts to it. Enjoy it. I, I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. In Boulder? Well, Nettle. Yeah. yeah. Well, Boulder, we'll forget Boulder. That's the college town. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, well, safe travels, safe yeah. journeys. Yeah, we'll, we'll miss you. <clears throat> well, I'll be around in the summer. I'm going to send the, road, the summer in Rhode Island, and then, and then I'll move out oh, later on. Okay. Well, so you Come on out. back and visit. I'm driving out in, in August or September. I'm going to, actually, I'm going to stay at <laughs> my sister's house in Grand Junction for a while, and then move to Netherland after that. Mm -hmm. I get the two over there, and then I... Got mom and, and my son and uh, Donna Rhode Island, so I'm okay. torn between the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, keep a, keep us updated on your yeah. whereabouts yeah, and, yeah. and stuff. <clears throat> We'd love to hear from I you. I get involved in something out there, I'll have to come to you guys for advice. Well, Colorado seems <laughs> great. I think the whole issue out west is water rights. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. That is huge. And it's both more on the west side than the east side, but even so, yeah, it's huge on both. Yeah, yeah. So, so wish you the best. Thanks right. for everything. Right. And um, all it's your been real education too. Yeah. Great. Thanks. It's been great well, having you as a liaison you. too with yeah. trails and, yeah. and uh, okay. all that. You find yeah. new people. Yeah. 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 First I know. You know anybody? Is that what the Possible. All okay. right. So uh, motion to dismiss. Close meeting. Second. So move. Second. Good night. <laughs> Sorry it ran late. This isn't too late, right, Brian? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. See ya.